we're going, T minus 20. Give me a 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Bloodline is meant for an adult audience. Love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. Content. Listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey, hey, hey. it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Stephen Jenkins is going to be in here tonight from uh, Third Eye Blind. Stephen. Evidently was here at uh, 845 in the evening. No, what? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Drew, that's good acting on your part. No, what? No, but really. Good I don't, listen, gravy. Hey, listen, I'm trying to concentrate, uh, not saying the F word because I'm in such pain all the time now. But look. <laughs> your mantra is just F, 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 F. Holy F, F holy F, 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 holy F. And then F, you start starts. sitting up, holy F. Oh, holy it's, S, then it's like, oh, my F, this is like F, oh. Really? Yes. You still in a lot of still in a good deal yeah. of pain? Yeah. Oh, Drew. Yeah. yeah. All right. But I'm feeling, I mean, I feel okay. I feel kind of strong. All right. But I, mm-hmm. I'm kind of surprised that somebody's been on the show as many times as he has. I mean, remember we met him in Chicago one time? He yeah. We made it at 12 o'clock then. And... Well, we have moved the times around a little bit because uh, Steven's been on the show <laughs> out here a couple of times. Yeah. And then I think we met uh, him and uh, Orion, I yeah. think the uh, guitar player. I'm looking at the band picture. I'm seeing if I see him in there. Mm. Well, anyway, uh, saw him. Yeah, there he is. Yeah. Saw him uh, in Chicago where they came to join us with the time difference and everything. So maybe got spun around. Yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, he'll, uh, he's now coming back to the studio. This ironically happens from time to time. Guest shows up an hour and a half early. Yeah. And then ends up being late. Yes. Because they step out. Yeah. He, th- uh, I do this, by the way, when I get up too early for something. Yes. I wake Make up sure an hour earlier than I need to, and I go, well, what the hell? I'm going to I'm gonna get high and uh, maybe start roofing the house or something with this 40 minutes I have, yeah. and then I end up being late. Right. All right. There we go. You ready to rock here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's uh, talk to Courtney, who's 25. Courtney? Yeah? What's up? Um, I'm not sure if I'm, p- <clears throat> if I'm pregnant or not. Mm-hmm. I had my period, the first day was April 30th, but I'm having, like, symptoms, so I don't know. You mean you you were bleeding, and you stopped? Uh-huh. And then what are your symptoms now? Well, I'm, um, I always have to go to the bathroom a lot. So maybe you have a urine infection. Okay, and is I it, that mean, that's, that's that not mean a sim- No, that's not a symptom of pregnancy until you're, like, in your sixth month. Well, I thought it was because before I, had, I have a baby, and last time I had it, it I had the same thing. Mm-hmm. Immediately, like one week into the pregnancy. Well, no, not immediately. No, okay. But it was in the first trimester. Yeah, maybe at the end of the third month. Okay, uh, and I right. feel okay. like nausea all the time, but I don't know. I mean, is it? Well, my, that could be uh, psychosomatic. It could be your urine infection. It, okay. Courtney, come on. Drew, when <laughs> when do the changes begin? When do you start feeling it? I mean, you some get, women claim they know immediately that they're pregnant, you, but you, the egg gets fertilized, and it spends several days making its way down for implantation. The uh, the uh, egg does. Yeah, it's just cruising. It's Makes its even... way down. Yep. Oh, from the tube down. Into I the thought it was heading up. No, can heading I get, down. Can I get the pictures up. No, there? no, no, I don't no. want to see any of that yucky stuff no. in there. Uh, all right. So, does Courtney know if she's pregnant or not? Want I, to get I, a I, test? I mean, I mean, you were just had your period, and now it hurts when you pee and you feel nauseated. You have a urine infection. By uh, a pregnancy would be fifteenth on the list of possibilities here. Well, is it possible to have your period while you're pregnant? You don't really have a period. You have what's called first trimester bleeding, and that's caused by tubal pregnancies, uh, spontaneous abortion, miscarriages, things like that. Okay. So it's a serious thing if you have bleeding and you're pregnant. Okay. You, why, okay. Don't, why don't you just get a pregnancy test? Wasn't it too early? It is too early. That's right. But oh, it's only, you, well, I don't know how long it's been. Like five days. Since you had the sex or since you noticed the since pain? Since she, she ended her period. All right. All right, we've decided you're not pregnant. Okay. But but you need to see a doctor you're, right away because this can, this can get in your kidneys. It can be quite serious. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah good times. Okay. Or it can be an STD, too. That's the other thing that causes pain with urination. Drew, would you rather have a uh, urinary infection or be pregnant? U- UTI, thank you. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Much, Put me down much. for that, too. Yeah, I will. Corey? Yeah. You're 20? 
Yes, sir. What's up? Hey, uh, my girlfriend and I probably have sex like three times a week, and mm-hmm. it seems like I get really, really raw uh, as far as penis-wise. Mm-hmm. Fat. <laughs> Because uh, sack-wise, I'll notice myself. Drew, anal-wise. Do anal-wise? You, do you notice any uh, just chafing? No, no, I haven't noticed any lately, no. Sack-wise? Uh, really, yeah, it can be a problem, sack-wise. Taint-wise? Taint-wise ain't so wise, no. That's, mm-hmm. no. What about knob-wise? Knob-wise were the and problem, the really, yeah. Knob can be really... Okay. No. Well, yeah. well, see, that's the thing. So, I mean, we use that, you know, and, and I was just wondering if there's anything... You like any use kind of what? KY. Okay. Did we bring up KY? No, but so anything wise, he's heard KY. Oh, he heard oh, the wise. Sorry. Yeah. I see. Yeah, I heard You heard, heard yeah. taint wise and he heard KY. KY. Yeah. Okay. Good enough. So but you I, use I, KY, I, yeah. I, I thought, um, I mean, if there's like an STD involved, you know, because I, I, I had sex like maybe two years ago with this girl and I found out she was pretty uh, whore aroundish, you know, and, and uh, I don't know if, if there was anything... You know, like I like the way people therapies. think in terms of, you know, if somebody has an STD, they must be misbehaving. There's well, something wrong with them. found out that she'd been a little busy. But you know, you know what I mean. That's probably n- many of the people he doesn't think of as busy were busy, right? And could equally be likely to expose him to something. And, and Corey, of the things you can get that can cause a sort of a rash-like irritation, uh, herpes is one up way up on the list there. Any, anything that burns on your penis after any sort of exposure, irritation. It sort of has to be seems, proven it not to be. It's like it's on one, like one side of it. It's never on the other. Which like, is even like more, which is even more herpetic, and that tends to recur in the same place. Yeah, because if it was just basic chafing, you'd feel it on both. You'd have it on or both sides. Or he could you? get just some chronic irritation there that needs to be treated, and then he keeps reactivating because they're having sex three times a week. Try wearing a condom for a few weeks. <laughs> yeah. How why is that? Wait, whoa, 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 Why is that funny? He doesn't want to well, step backwards. I, I could try that. You're right. You're right. You have a big penis. Um. Not really. I right. yeah. That's good. I respect that. Why? Why'd you ask him that? Well, I, sometimes I thought you know the girth is is such that it's it's rubbing against him. <clears throat> Got it. Yeah. You want the guy with the big penis to have a problem? Is what it'd going be on. nice. Yes, I it'd see. be nice. Yeah, but yeah. if they just die earlier, that'd be fine too. Yeah, I'll see to it. Let's say in their late teens. Mm-hmm. Steven? Yeah. You're seventeen. Yeah, that's right. Let me ask you something. All right. Your name is uh, S T E V N. V E N. Yeah, uh, what I say, V E N. Yeah. And uh, you you know, by the way, you're a bad speller when you're actually reading the letters off of how someone's name is spelled, and you still screw it up. Yes. Okay. Stephen Jenkins from Third Eye Blind has the S T E P H A N. A N. Yeah. Is that still Stephen, or do I got to m- screw it up just a little? Stephen. Ex- Stephen. Well, I'm, I'm just saying. I know they're both Stevens, but it feels weird saying Stephen with the P H A N. Well, Stefan is a is a name. It is no, a name, but, what, but his name is it, isn't Stefan. At what point is it Stefan? It's Stefan right now yeah. <laughs> for me. But, I mean, I know Stephen Jenkins is not Stefan Jenkins. Yeah. I'm just wondering, is it Stephen? Well, yeah. maybe they just call him Stephen because it's easier or something. I don't know. All okay. Right. Well, that solves it. All right. So no, uh, no insight from a fellow Stephen. No. Yeah. yeah. Stephen King with the PH, too, right? Right. Yeah, and it's just uh, Stephen. No, no difference between the V and the PH. All right, hmm? uh, I I can't. Every time I every time I see Stephen Jenkins' name written, I want to say something else. I just know his name is Stephen Jenkins. Wouldn't it be interesting to see what was in the parents' minds when they chose the? Well, spelling? we can we can find that out when he comes in right. uh, into the studio. Maybe they're European. Go ahead, Stephen. Yeah. Okay. So I've been going out with my girlfriend, who's eighteen, for about four months now, and. Uh, She's she's always uh, been the one to lead things on, like start things in the relationship, like, and uh, she wanted to have sex a couple times, right? But but every time we we have opportunity and it hold gets on down one to, second, you know what we're doing, then she did you hear that? She starts panicking, kind of. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's just uh, really curious because the next day she'll you know be fine with it and she'll she'll say, oh, I just freaked out at the last moment, but it's happened like like four or five times so far. And I, I, I don't know what would bring that sudden panic on at the... The sudden hell is she? She's 18. Yeah, she's just not ready. She thinks she's ready, but she's not quite there. Well, there could have been some history, too. Could have we been. don't know about it. Could have been. How long you guys been dating again? Four months. Four months. How she... far have you gotten with her? Uh, so far, just, uh, you know, third base. Third base? Yeah. Is that, is that oral? Now? Yeah. That's oral? Mm-hmm. It's nice. Good times. Yeah. 
I don't think uh, Oral was on the bases when no, I was using it. It was in the grotto at the Playboy Mansion. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, f- it was uh, making out first base, feeling up second base, feeling downstairs third, third base, base, and then sex. There was no place for Oral. Didn't enter into the thinking yeah. and the planning process. <laughs> I know. That didn't exist. We dare not even dream of uh, such yeah. glorious things. All right, uh, Stephen. So, uh, so she, I don't know if there's any answer. Yeah, to this. you can ask her if this is an issue. If there's something substantial in her past that's sort of retriggering her trauma in the present and making her anxious and panicky, or maybe she's just not ready, and you just got to go very slow and be very supportive to her. And that's, I think, more the case. Really, we're, we're just going to pronounce S T E P H A N exactly the same as V E N. In this case, we are going to. We're just going to say it just we're like it's say it just like that. Steven. Yeah. Ben. Just. I feel like Steven. I'm talking. I, feel, I want to talk to her. I talk to my kids. If you bring this up one more time. <laughs> I'm going to get time out. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to suck, suck you in your belly button, Drew, and yeah. you're going to explode. Oh, 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 oh. It'd be great. Oh. Oh. Staples popping everywhere. About it. Erica? Oh. Yes? You're a, see, here we go. This is, this is Eric with an A on the end. Erica. Yeah. Yes. I'm a female. I'm a girl. I know. I know. Adam's obsessed okay. with names tonight. You're, okay. You're yeah. 20. All right. I'm 20, and, um, well, I've been with my boyfriend for over a year and a half, and um, everything's great, and we're doing good and stuff, but um, I'm having problems orgasming, orgasming through um, intercourse. Mm-hmm. Where, and, did you, where Let me ask something. Where did you get, and this is not meant to be harsh, where did you get the idea that you were supposed to be having orgasms during intercourse? Just, this, is my, this, is my, this is a curiosity of mine. Well, um, w- well, it's, it's good. No, no, we're, but yeah, Here, stop talking. But no, no, I'm, I'm curious. I'm just curious. They read it in Cosmo. Or where, where do they get the idea that a physiologic function? To she told no, you it, it, it really good. doesn't doesn't happen to most women. It doesn't. Well, I know that, and it's well, yeah, it just seems unfair. <laughs> but but you have orgasm with oral sex, right? Yes. Well, yeah. that's not so unfair, right? Well, but if you think about like making love as just sex, then. You, it's unfair because, like, the guys always go and, you know, females don't always Listen, go. believe me, we wish you broads would get, get off while we were in you yes. for a change. Yes. Believe you me. Yes. Yeah, I can see we that. We don't need to be I've, parked I've, downstairs I've, for uh, 12 <laughs> minutes that feels like three days. <laughs> believe you me. <laughs> Listen, I, you know, i I, I, I got to be honest here. Oh, here we go. I'm just saying... You know, you think time passes slowly when you're in line at the DMV or something. How about you just stick your tongue out as far as you can get it and never bring it in your mouth and just breathe through your right nostril or possibly your forehead for just like 14 straight minutes. Just everyone just just do that. Uh, uh, uh. Eight seconds feels like a lifetime when you're doing that. If you were just doing that standing up watching TV, you'd be pissed. Yes, that's right. Now you're, you're buried in darkness. You feel things. There's always that uh, rogue pube that is uh, stuck to your soft palate up there. You, you like you want to get Way it, but yeah, yeah. There's a <laughs> yeah. You have to you have to basically speak Yiddish to get the thing out. <laughs> you, you don't want to interrupt the flow like uh, oh. as a guy. It's like you, you don't want to you don't want to say you've injured yourself performing uh, yeah. oral. <laughs> yeah. Here he is. Right I don't want to miss out on this. Right in the middle of Adam's oral diatribe. I was listening to this in the car. Thank you. Good to see you, Stephen. That's Stephen. S T E P H A N. <laughs> I know. That's the just, name they gave me, dude. It's just Stephen. It's just. It's how it was spelled at birth. It's you know, Thom York. Good. Uh, good to see you, by it's the nice way. It's nice to be here. It's. Uh, it's been. Sorry, I'm late, but they they told me that I thought you guys had a new place, and I I got there at like 8:45, and don't start. No, don't. Just stay. Let him stay. I went with out. The, and, don't get into the new place thing. Just start with. Stay with the names. Okay? We're doing we're st- good. We're yeah, still we're, in the same yeah, whack sh- ass old Steve, place stop, here. Stop it, Stephen. Don't, don't, like don't do it. I'm, don't frankly, do it. I'm tired of that. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Oh my god. Something? All right. No, oh, that, oh. I I don't have the energy to get into this dump tonight. Oh. I, I would rather enjoy the moment with uh, Stephen. <sighs> so anyway. Good, good to see you. It's good to see you guys. Uh, I guess it was. Uh, well, it's been a couple of years, right? <laughs> no. When we were here last time. When you did that, uh, about a year, a couple months ago, the breast cancer. Yeah, um, we did breathe. I came, breathe, came yeah. here. We did the breathe benefit. Yeah, I was looking at that. That was two thousand. Yeah, Drew. Uh, Drew came over and and uh, he hosted. Yeah, and then I just hid away and finished the album, which came out today. Yes. Yeah, Third so Eye Blind's new album came out today. I can't and, believe it. And it has been uh, three oh. years, over three years, since the last Third Eye Blind album. And uh, was that intentional? No. 
Well, it wasn't. It just, uh, it just uh, the way it happened. I don't know. I it mean, took just, a while. You have enough money. You're enjoying your life. You're busy with uh, different various things like acting and stuff like that. Yeah, right? I did some acting, but this is really the thing I'm really into doing. I just we, we built a studio. We we wanted to take a little bit of time off. So I took some time off. I did the Breathe Benefit, which if you ever try to put on a benefit, takes forever. It, it took all my time for a long time to do what we did. And then uh, we built a studio, which, you know, there's sheet rocking involved. Sure. You know. Tin you knocking. Know. And uh, and then uh, we started the album, and that I think having our own studio made us take longer to do it. Where, so where is the studio? Is it up in San it's Francisco? San Francisco, yeah. And is it on a, you guys own the building? Is it on a piece of uh, your own property, that kind of thing? No, we just leased the building. And you just built the studio in there? And yeah. do you, do you, can you lease the studio out to other yeah. bands and yeah. stuff like that? Yeah, the Donnas are in there. Oh, it's, really? It's yeah. down, down in the warehouse district or something, right? Yeah, it's down south of Market area. By the by the baseball diamond, right? Drew, you wait, 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 you going out there? No, yeah, I remember, I remember, I remember yeah, you talking about Yeah, it's by the baseball this. diamond. Yeah, he was talking about this last I, I do time. Adam, you don't remember any what happened to you, man. You I don't do remember rem anything. I do remember this discussion. I said San Francisco. I know. Come on. Sorry. We had the Donnas in here a couple of weeks ago, and they were cool. I, uh, I like them. So they're in your studio utilizing it. You guys, yeah, people from San Francisco use it, and it's it's that's not what we built it for. We built it as a home for us, but uh, other musicians seem to like it, and it's what made this album. And I think this album sounds really good, and it's part of that's because we we built the place to do it. Well, maybe we should. Uh, maybe it's a good segue to hear something off yeah. the new Third Eye Blind CD. Look at that. Great idea. Yeah, you got it queued up there, Anderson. It's been a year, and you're still smooth. <laughs> Thanks, baby doll. Is that what that was? <laughs> this one's called uh, Blinded. friend coming over now to visit you and that's what I've become I let myself in though I know I'm not supposed to but I never know when I'm done and I see you bugging up the mirror vape around your body glistens in the shower and I wanna stay right here and go down on you for an hour or stay and let the day just fade away I wanted to thank you for a vision that was lost that you returned, but you passed where you understand. Now our appetite is blown, little S is known, except she's a little angry, grabs a towel, and looks away, and he fades with the day, and I fall down on what to say, oh something clean, let me be clever, hey oh well, whatever, but that's not what I mean. And it tells us what we're left with We become the things we do Me, I'm a fool spent from defiance Yeah, you got me, but I didn't give up on you The caress is not a t-shirt Oh, a swan song, no He is born again And it's not easy being me But I can't promise I will mend Or bend when you believe That we are fixed now from our birth not just falling back to earth Still you know I'll try again Cause I believe that we are lucky We are golden, we have stolen And it's in the days when we were one So when I see you Spite of all that we become We're still blinded But I'm still staring down the sun When I see you When I see you When I see you When I see you
Third Eye Blind, everybody. Stephen Thank Jenkins you so much. is uh, in studio tonight. So nice to be here. That sounded great. Thanks. Yeah. It's my life's work. Three, uh, three years plus and uh, right uh, hit the ground Well, we spent running. about a year making it. Yeah. And, and so I guess here we are. That particular song had some problems in radio that were pertinent to what we've been discussing when you walked I in. said go down on you for an hour, yeah. And, in the uh, lyrics. Yeah. And they don't like that. No. Adam didn't it's like just, that either. When you're a white rock guy. He was just talking about that. I, I'm with the program directors on this one, Stephen. An hour especially is a long time to be going down on something. It's a bad something. precedent, yeah. you say? You said like Bible a belt, they, fight they muff for that. 10 minutes or something. That's something I, I think I wouldn't, I wouldn't yank. But uh, I hear well, an hour. You know, Anything a, over half an hour, i got to yank that. It's an expression that. of desire, not a statement of fact. That's well, not good. Don't put that on. Who it, put that on? Don't do that. Come on, like Anderson. That. That's they Don't cramp on his art. You know? And now what the... Can do they tweak the song? Like, can they, um, can they say go down? They can turn like go down on you around, uh, uh, yeah, and and fix it up so it's like uh, for power so nap or down something. Turn go down on you around. Imagine the imagery. Right, <laughs> right. So, uh, well, we'll we'll, uh, well, we played it on. We didn't do anything with it no. on the show, did we? No, no, you were bold. It's a bold That's show. That's right. Great song. Love lines. We're here. Let me tell you something. We're bold and we're we're lazy too. It's it's easy to be bold. Like we don't like to listen to stuff in advance and work it out and ask questions. Stephen is uh, here. We're going to take a uh, take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, Drew, a uh, little question about Drew's hernia surgery. Yeah. Drew's board certified, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. He. Uh, by the way, I. Uh, you know, I used to say hernia, I used to say a hernia my mm -hmm. whole life because it's the only way I ever heard it. People say my, uh, I had a hernia, a I hernia. had a hernia surgery. So you thought it was one word, a hernia? I, I did. <laughs> Just like I thought P. Isadora's name was P. Isadora instead of Pia Isadora. Yeah. It. Well, uh, nice, nice see, I know our, timely, I know our audience. Yeah, timely reference. I know wow, our man. audience. That's great. <laughs> I know our audience. Well, did you just say this is, P is I just Adora, want to tell people you know? this is going this this is going to be one of those shows where you want to sit in your car because we're going to get into it really deeply, in spite of what he just said, which was yeah. wasn't that cool. But no, that after wasn't this cool. this break, you, we are going to get deep deep into it. As a matter of fact, those of you who are at home need to climb into your car and just sit in the drive. Because I do that sometimes. This is Stephen Jenkins, and I'm you know I'm not only a participant but I'm a fan. Thank you, Stephen. We'll be back. Hello, this is your radio. Love line will be right back. As many as one in three Americans with HIV don't know it. To find a testing location near you, call toll free 1 866 344 KNOW. The beach at night is so romantic. The beating waves. The foaming water. Oh, Eddie, did you bring something? Just my all-consuming passion for you, Cheryl. Trojan Man. Greetings, beach bunnies. Trojan Man. How'd you get here? We did the backstroke, didn't we, boy? So, Trojan Man, what's up? I can see it's not just the surf. <laughs> yeah, well, your timing is questionable. I'd like to think it's perfect, considering you're missing more than just your bathing suit. Eddie, you forgot? Well, you know. Don't wipe out, dude, before you hang ten, remember? Remember Trojan, America's most trusted latex condom. He's right. We can't surf without the right board, Eddie. Thanks, Trojan man. Surf's back up. For the pleasure you want and the protection you trust, use Trojan, America's number one condom. My job is done here. All right, I'll get you a boogie board. And if you'd like to try something other than latex, there's Trojan Supra. Strong yet micro sheer polyurethane, it transmits body heat for your ultimate sensual pleasure. See package for important information. Every day, 10 children are killed by gunfire. Where have all the children gone? Long time passing. Where have all the children gone? Long time ago. Where have all the children gone? Gone to graveyards one by one. stop unless you help stop it. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT to find out what you can do. Not one more lost life. Not one more grieving family. Not one more. Oh, when will we ever learn? A public
public service message from the U.S. Department of Justice, the Crime Prevention Coalition, and the Ad Council. What's a frequency can at the show? Things are drain. Hi, this is Mike Mills and Peter Buck of REM for RAD, Rockers Against Drunk Driving. You know, it's okay to rock and roll and party, just let someone else do the driving. Please don't drink and drive, and don't drive with someone else who's been drinking. Thank you. What's the frequency can at the shop? Hey, what are you doing after the game? Well, there's a big party at Jason's. His parents are out of town, and there's going to be plenty to drink. <laughs> I think I'll pass. You're going to pass up a party? Well, it sounds more like trouble than a party. Make the right choice. Underage drinking always means trouble. It's dumb, dangerous, and illegal. You're going to miss all the fun. I'm going to stay out of trouble. A public service message from the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. If you're between the ages of 12 and 18, you're invited to play our Name That Theme Song Challenge. Just listen to the following songs and try to identify the popular TV shows they come from. Number one. Number two. Come and knock on our door. Come and knock on our door. We've been waiting for you. We've been waiting for you. Three. Five. Sweet Valley, Sweet Valley. Now, if you can name two, you know your TV. If you can name three, you're a certified TV master. If you can name four or more, you probably need to get off the couch and get outside. Run, walk, jump, pedal, paddle, blade, board, kick, dribble, spike, get up, get out. A public service message brought to you by the President's Council on Physical Fitness and Sports and the Ad Council. Hey everybody, it's Loveline. Stephen Jenkins is here tonight from Third yes, Eye Blind. New album is out today. It's today. called Out of the Vein. He's going to be on uh, Leno, him and uh, the rest of the band, tomorrow night. So you can look for him uh, then. And uh, Lincoln Park in here tomorrow night. So, where were we? Drew's uh, recovering from his hernia surgery. Oh. Mm-hmm. Not feeling well. Not feeling bad, but not feeling well. What is this a picture of in the back on the album cover? You know? Uh, I think it's Birmingham, England. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cool Everybody picture. Everybody thinks this is our bass player, Orion, when he was five. Huh? Yeah. It's good. Kind of looks like him. It, it's got some, uh, got some Orion I in like him. this. It's, it's uh, the, 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 the cover of, uh, we're talking, uh, by the way, this is Stephen Jenkins from Third Eye Blind. My guests tonight are <laughs> Adam and, and, and Drew, Dr. Drew. He's certified. Um, and, uh, and uh, this is my album cover, and this is a photo from Mick Rock. He did all that old glam stuff. Yeah, this is uh, like the, all the like Rocky Horror Picture Show photos mm -hmm, and all mm -hmm. the Bowie photos. And he's like this sort of classic rock photographer. And we use him on, on the cover of the picture, album. It's a cool uh, record cover that Drew just broke. But is it uh, is the picture of the guy who's on the cover? He's in front of an England uh, English uh, town. Yeah. Is he standing there? Or did you put him there? No, it's superimposed. It's, it's there. This That's photo is was in a book from Mick uh, from Mick Rock, this this photographer, and it was Mott the Hoople's uh, original idea for a cover for all the young dudes, and wow. they never used it. Oh, really? And I was like, why didn't they use this? This is the best album cover I've ever seen, so we used it. Oh, oh wow, That's smart. Fun. All right, let's talk to uh, Michelle. I just made that up. <laughs> no, you didn't. Michelle is uh, twenty-seven. Michelle. Michelle. Hey guys. What's up? Before I ask Dr. Drew my question about hernia, I just want to say a one hernia. thing to Stephen. Stephen, if anybody loves you at Live 105 in San Francisco, it's Sharon Walsh. That's so nice to hear. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> anyway, big Dr. up to Drew. San Francisco. Yeah, big up. Um, anyway, Dr. Drew, I had hernia surgery in January. Uh, and, um, my condolences. You don't hear that from women that often, it's do you? It's not as common with women, but they get it. Well, you know, when you're lugging heavy shit. Video, you get. Sorry, guys, yep, yep. You're on the radio right now, as a matter of fact. Yeah, it's, it's ironic. Um, it's ironic that you would have a background in radio <laughs> and you and just bust out the S yeah. word almost immediately. Um, anyway, <laughs> anyway, I'm still having a lot of pain. Unacceptable. You mean, did you have the, the laparoscopic procedure? I, I, no. Is that no? They cut me open. They didn't go. They didn't do the one that you did. I had the scope. Oh. 
Yeah, they they definitely they cut me open and they put the mesh piece inside. Oh, uh, why? I'm so sorry. Why wouldn't? Why would they cut her open if they had this other I, technology? I don't know. Maybe maybe it was a, was it an umbilical hernia? Um, no, was it was it? lower. Huh. That's it funny. was. It was. It you guys want to see my holes? My. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Drew's going to show us this hole. Look, look. There's there's oh. Drew's hole. Oh, oh, that's oh yeah. Let me see if I can describe this to you. The 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 humanity, the horror. It's a, <laughs> it's sort of a. It's a dead yellow color with, yeah. with purple, purple discolorations. Yeah, nice. the but his yellow. abs are tight. Inside, it's all a, his, a mess. His belly button looks like a black eye. <laughs> and it was shaved. He looks like a, a shaved cat. It's like a old yeah. tranny who got beat up. <laughs> yeah, my star's not too pretty. Oh. All right, so. Um, how, I do not plan to have pain four months out. I'm telling you that. How can Dr. Drew help you with your hernia? I just, every time I bend over, I feel the mesh. Like, I feel it inside of me. Yeah, they, they say that you can, it takes a while to really stretch it out. Like, the athletes and things that have to get this, which is common, they say, you know, six months later, they, they're still kind of stretching on it a little bit. And sometimes, Dr. Drew, you just got to bend over and feel the mesh. And right now, I can't straighten up. <laughs> and right. I feel the mesh all the time. I'm bent over all the time. All right. Yeah. Pansy! True, that's an interesting, <laughs> interesting do, like, statement. I know. I'm bent over <laughs> all the time. All right, I'm Sweetie, done with I just Michelle. can't get up. <laughs> <laughs> I've been tying the same loafer for 20 years. <laughs> okay. All right, Michelle. My nuts yeah. are getting spoiled, uh, too. I think you're going to have to just break it in a little more. Yeah, yeah take time. Take your time. Mm-hmm. All right. How can I break it in? I, is there exercises just, I can do? Just or? abdominal exercises and stretching, just the usual stuff. Well, what are they? Should you be doing crunchies at a certain mm-hmm. point? I'm going to talk to my surgeon about a week or so. I, I don't think you do for about a month. Okay. Downward right. dog, upward dog, you know, a little That's ashtanga right. yoga. A little yoga. You do some Kadashna. yoga? You seem like a yoga guy. I do? Yeah, he's <laughs> Bay Area, and you're, you're up in your head, you know. Really? You, yeah. <laughs> it, it seems no. like you could do some yoga. You're in good shape. You're sort of long and lean. Yeah. Well, uh, no. All right. I did, really. I did a yoga class once when we were... Uh, oh, yeah, in North Carolina. But I'd taken a class or two, it. you know, but I'm not like the, you know, I don't know. I liked it. I uh, only problem is, is I, I used the mat, that uh, the gym mat. I didn't bring my own mat, and it was... Uh, it was really, it was not in good shape at all. What they gave you? Yeah, and oh. you're stuffing your face into it, and it smells like ass, and really, you, you want to complain. If but you really, if you haven't seen, if you haven't seen Adam Carolla walking around, uh, you know, one of the founders of the Man Show with a yoga mat, you really, you haven't. No, looked. there was another dimension to that weirdness, yeah. which he was surrounded by North Carolinian housewives who all wanted to talk to him about the Man Show at the conclusion and, and, of this and, yoga. And class. here he is complaining that he's got to use, you know, that, the, the the yoga yoga mat used by the scum. Out there, where's my own yoga mat? The when common I need it? people, yes. Yeah. Kevin. Yeah, hi. What's up? You're 23. Yeah, I just started dating this girl, and um. Kevin does not know, sound we 23. Finally, we finally got down to it, <laughs> and uh, she got like uh, real big beef curtains. I didn't know if that. Whoa! She got like uh, what? 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 Beef curtains. Really big beef beef curtain. Cur- that is, I've yeah. never heard. Ann, ever heard that term? Never heard that one. Anybody? Oh, that uh, Laura, uh, uh, Tara, don't call me Tara. It's, a, it's it. a term that's used more often in Britain. Yeah, I see. that's good. I'm and in France, I guess, huh? Yes, anywhere yeah. the gentry know. resides. I imagine, yes. All right, so uh, Kevin, I was just wondering if that meant she's been around a lot, or yes, she's no. been stretched out. No, born yes, that born that way. Yes, not the moment she was born, but that genetically endowed. Yes. Kevin, I mean, okay, like Kevin, it. quiet down. Let me ask you some questions. Why is it you're 23 and you sound like a Vietnam vet? Oh, well, I smoke a lot. My my throat's a little, you know, cottoned up. You do drugs? Oh yeah. Well, I, I don't call it drugs. It's just vodka. Yeah, but you, you, you don't you call <laughs> you 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 don't call uh, labia beef curtain. Or actually, you do. You don't call yeah. Right. Okay. So uh, you. You do drugs, smoke, uh, and how's everything going for you otherwise? Uh, everything otherwise, besides the big curtains, uh, everything's fine. I mean, okay. Oh, that's a problem? Yeah. So usually you got it. This is, look, Kevin, the look, look, this they're is, in the way. Kevin, they're not they're in the way. In the way. You're, you're in the way. Of, you're, you're, you're closing your own curtain. This is Stephen. I'm, yeah. I'm going to just take care it's of gonna this. It's going to be curtains for you. This is really, Kevin, the, the, the issues you're facing are really the way you look at things. And, and it, it comes down to a question of adjectives. So what you need to think about is the word plush. Yeah. And when people, people ask you about how your girl is, you don't need to talk about this in any you know overt ways. What you need to say is, oh, she's great. She's maybe so we'll just, plush. Maybe we'll can use the French term, drop the buff. Yeah. yeah. She's plush. plush. I love her. She's plush. All right, Kevin. Okay? Plush. plush. That's right. Thank you very much. Plush. You got it. Okay. 
It's she a had, beautiful thing. And Love the, is a beautiful thing. Look into the pot, and I'm sure there's opiates here, too. I can just feel it. Fast forward to uh, tomorrow at work, uh, Kevin. Like, yeah, my lady has plush beef curtains. <laughs> plus size Crushed? beef curtain. Crushed Crushed beef curtain. I did what I could. I, I think I you, tried. I think you did what what you call positive uh, imaging. You, and, and, you replaced and, uh, beef curtain with plush. And risk management, good. damage control too. It was good. Right. Yeah. How far are we going to get with that guy? Christian. Yeah. How's it going? Good. You're 15. Yes. You got a question for you Stephen? You sound 15. Indeed, I do. Mm. Ask um, away. I just, I just wanted to say, how's it going, Stephen? And uh, congratulations on the release of Out of the Vein. Thank you so much, Christian. Yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs> It's worth all the wait and Did you listen the... to it today? Yeah, I bought did, it today. Did right you Did you like it? I was yeah, I loved I loved it. I'm so uh, glad. Yeah, I, I was... really want people to like this album because we worked hard on it and, and it's it yeah, makes man, me feel I get good, the man. Feeling like Thanks. People are kind of like, it, it's like under the radar now, you know? And you know, I was just that's partly what my question's kind of about. Uh-huh. It's like uh you know, how much is this, the public success of this album? have to do with the future direction of the band? Mm. Good question. Well, I think we're always kind of under the radar. I mean, we, we uh, you know, we're not a, we're not, Third Eye Blind's not a big media band. We, I don't think we've ever been on the cover of a magazine. We're, um, we're not a big video band. We didn't put out a video for uh, the first single off the, the last album. Yeah, we haven't put out a video for this one. Um, it's really what Third Eye Blind's about is, is music. And we're, we're kind of weird. We're kind of a misfit band. There's not really a, a place for us and that's the kind of people we appeal to i think is Absolutely a is like, misfits ourselves you know well does the label want you to come out with a video for instance yeah they wanted a video but every time we make videos we feel, i always feel so bizarre i look at them i was like that isn't uh, do you have a problem with people downloading your stuff and so you have to try to include a dvd or anything in your products well i think everybody has a problem downloading i actually like it when people people have started to uh bootleg shows and yeah. they download those and they trade those and i think that's great and and there's B-sides and things like that. Yeah, um, all the all the demos they have up on the internet, like you know, I I'd heard Wake for Young Souls a long time ago, uh -huh. and that song that song's great, and I'm so glad you re-recorded that. Thank you so much. I'm it, really, really glad does, you liked the album. Yeah, it really fits in with the album. I was it it's was just, like it's just it's just how we do it, you know. I, I I this is a this is a Third Eye Blind's a band that um, has done everything on its own terms and sort of its own way, and we've. You know, somehow I don't know how that we've sold eight million records without ever being in the top twenty. Yeah, and it, that's really? how we do it. Yeah, wow. you know, so yeah, we just we're not like we're not hypey. You know? Well, let's yeah. let's pray you stay out of the top twenty with the right. New CD. I know if we have a big debut, we're going to be in big trouble, Christian. Yeah, huh. yeah. Hey, uh, thanks for listening, Christian. Thanks. Thank you. We got to talk times, about buddy. people's little. Yeah, but that was nice. Perversions now. Jennifer. Yeah. You're twenty. Yeah. You're three months pregnant. Mm -hmm. What's up? Huh? Okay, I have two questions. Your first pregnancy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go. The first question is, um, the guy that I'm with, he kind of like he t makes me feel really unimportant. Like I'm always the one calling him all the time. He's never concerned like with how I feel. He doesn't ask me how I'm doing or anything like that. And it's his child. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, he tells me he loves me and stuff. You know, like and um, he I always have to drive everywhere we go. And uh, if there's something like he doesn't can, have a car. No, he has a car, and it's nicer than mine. It's not that. He's just, he, I don't know what it is. He's, like, really cheap with me. How old is he? He's 21. What does he do for a living? Um, right now, he's not. Right now? Oh. Yeah. Right, right now, now, so he's trouble. Right? <laughs> wait, 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 right now what? He's not really doing anything. When everyone starts, uh, uh. Stephen, with a right now, means they're not doing crap. Yeah, he right. Doesn't, he doesn't have a job at the moment. Yeah. Right now means never have, Right never now, will. meaning uh, he's going to be the president of the United he States, but right now, he doesn't, doesn't have a job. He doesn't have a job. Yeah. Yeah, right now, the two worst right nows are, uh, where are you going to college? And uh, what do you do for a living? Yeah. Well, right so, now. Yeah, if you say, where are you going to college, and you hear right you now. You're going to go after people that go to City College again? That, that's, that's when junior it's college just, or trade tech right. comes in right after that. And uh, with jobs, it means either I don't have a It uh, oftentimes means not having a well, job. Well, it certainly means you're not doing what you imagine you should be doing. Or right. that well, I would say imagine. right now. We're off to a really bad start here. Yes, we yes, are yes. 20, we're pregnant, and we're not appreciated. And we're with a guy who's an a-hole. homie doesn't have a job. Yeah, yeah he's wait, supposed to be waiting for his ID because he has a suspended license because he has um, unpaid parking tickets and stuff, or not just parking tickets, traffic tickets. Why Why do you feel you need to be involved with somebody that is such a dick? I don't know. Like, I've, I fell in love with him, and, like, he wasn't he wasn't like this before. Um, do you guys have plans? Like you, you, to get married? You know, um, is he a kind man? Does he have plans? Are you going to move in together? He, like he's, He can't talk about that kind of stuff. He's not grown up enough. Wow. wow. He's 21, Jennifer. It's and, yeah, and he's... Does he know you're pregnant? 
Yeah, he knows. What's his plan for the kid? Did he try to talk you into an abortion or something like um, that? At first, he was. He told me that. He, here's our plan. I think we have a plan, and, I, and I'm I'm dead serious about this. And right, we're gonna say it on the count of three. Ready? You ready? Uh -huh. One, two, two, three. Adoption. adoption. Mm. Our plan is regroup. Realize this may have been a very grave mistake learn something from this, do something very courageous, and give this child to somebody who is prepared to be parents, and get on with your life and having learned a very serious lesson, which is you don't have to be with assholes, you're worth something more than that. And if you are with people that are not, if you really don't see people for who they are, you can end up in a very bad place. And that's where you are right now. And there is a way out, and I suggest you take it, it'll be great for the child, and it'll be great for you, and it might even teach him a little lesson. Because if you think about this, Jennifer, just think about the possibility of him saying, wow, I've really turned everything around and I just got a new job and I, 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 got, I, I cooked dinner and we're going to drive in my car and we're going to raise this kid and Never everything's going to be great. Not there's that years. and then there's the lottery and there's, right. a lottery, and there's no, adoption. And, th and there's my bong, <laughs> and, and that's, which is where he's going to be spending all his time. What about your bong, Drew? N anybody's bong. He'll, he'll latch on to. All right, Jennifer, uh -huh. how about uh, giving the kid up for adoption? Um, I don't. I don't think I can do that. But think of the child. Make the choice for the child. Well, think of you too. Well, if I anything, mean, I just get rid of him if it came down to it. But. The boyfriend. Mm. Yeah. Then you're there, left alone to raise a child. What are you gonna? How are you gonna support yourself? Um, I could. I don't know. I could figure that one out. If like my mom could could like adopt it. She already told me that. She would adopt the child. She will. Mm. Yeah. She said she'd do that. But like, I don't know if I. You know, this guy's out of the picture, right? Because this is his moment where he gets his act together and it didn't happen. Yep. I agree, right. Stephen. Actually, he's got about another, he's got about another 20 six, minutes. six weeks and then that, oh. that window slams shut for good. That's, that's giving him a, an extension. <clears throat> All right. So, Jennifer, uh -huh. he uh, is going to have to uh, S or get off the pot <clears throat> now because uh, he's going to be a dad in a few months. This, and no, this, he is, cannot, not, this he is not a guy. Like that, a this is not a guy that gets it together. He's it not together. ready. He's not that. He's he's eight years away from getting it together. Yeah. If if he if ever gets yeah. it together. Okay. Did you guys? Did you want to hear my other question? No. 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 We got to go to no. break. There's no question that could be this big. Oh yeah. my God. No. Seriously. Like it's really good. All right. Hurry. He seriously. Okay. Like recently when we've been having sex and stuff, he like just sometimes goes limp out of nowhere and like. Yeah. He told me that, like, he actually cummed, but, like, I know that he was lying to me because, like... Past tense of cum he didn't done, came. He didn't done cummed? No, he yeah. told me that he's all, I ejaculated him because I was like, what happened? Because, like, he just, like, goes limp and, like... Jennifer? Yeah. That wasn't as good as the pregnancy thing. He's doing drugs. He led with the best question. I agree with you. He's, he's doing drugs he's totally and he's a drag. You have to get rid of him. do drugs. All right, but so uh, what's, he's what's, a, um, what's the problem? Like, uh, one more reason to dump him. You want to know why he goes limp? Yeah, why? You're fat. Usually, no, it is. Totally please. Not. The most common. Totally hey, listen. Hey, yeah. The li it's nothing to do with you, uh, essentially ever. The reason is either drugs or some emotional issue he, about being intimate. He's overcome. He's anxious. He's overwhelmed. Whatever it is. It's e a either way, limp dick. Either deadbeat. way, it's not good. It's not a good thing. It just adds Pretty another. Hell. Even if he like approaches me to have sex, it's not me approaching him. And it's like, and it's sudden. not about you. That's All what right. you got to get out of your head. All right, please let your mom raise the kid, <laughs> or a nice family of raccoon. All right, something. All right. Thank you. All right. Some lemur, maybe. Yeah, listen, I don't want anyone who says uh, he cummed in me <laughs> to to raise uh, anything more than an iguana. <laughs> Only reptiles. I don't even trust them with warm-blooded creatures. <sighs> I feel so good. I think we really helped people there. Uh, we really did. We made our point. We made yeah. our point, point and is, that's our point. The point is well being well taken. Okay, Drew. Ironically, at a difficult uh, I, time I'm explaining in, I mean, how you made that point. I'm in pain. I okay. told you guys, this is this is going to be one of those shows. It's going to be really good. Drew, you ice your balls down. Uh, yeah. And we'll be back with Stephen Jenkins from Third Eye Blind after this. Love Line. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Ten kids die by gunfire every day. Help stop the violence. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT. Not one more lost life. Not one more. Was blind, but now I see. A public service message from this station, the U.S. Department of Justice, the Crime Prevention Coalition, and the Ad Council. Mommy, Mommy! It's all right. Daddy's here. Where's Mommy? Mommy doesn't feel well. How come Mommy's sick so much? 
much, Daddy. I don't know, honey. Alcoholism affects your family, your friends, your job, all the things that are important to you. I want Mommy to be the way she used to be. Me too. Alcoholism is a treatable disease. Get help before you lose the really important things in life. A public service message from the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Yo, I'm Alfonso Ribeiro for Rad. Hey, partying's a good time, have fun, but you don't have to get in the car and do it. Get a taxi, get a limo, get whatever you want, get a friend, get home safely. Don't no drink and drive. Hey, Larry, you think we'll ever have a baby? Vince, we're crash dummies. Yeah, but your head's about the size of a baby. Here, give it to oh, me, will you? What are you doing? I'm taking it off! Oh. Oh, I'm using your head in the rear-facing infancy. Up in front, kids won't know what hit them with the airbag goes. Where are we going, Vince? You know that brick wall with a big bullseye? Sure, like the back of my... Holy cow, Larry, you're embedded in the seat. I can't understand you. I'll go get a tire iron. Thank you. you could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your kids in the back seat. A message from the Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. What's up? This is Warren G, you know what I'm saying? I'm here giving it up for Rad because they do a lot of good things for people. And uh, I just want to say, before you drink, make sure that you got somebody that can drive your butt home so you won't crash or get pulled over and get a DUI. So go ahead and follow the rules. Yo, this is Lamont Bentley with a message from Rad. Now listen up. I know that you're young, and I know that you love to party. But when you party, don't be selfish. Don't drink and drive. Living in a world like this one, it's hard to feel. You can't change it, but we must try. Hi, I'm Malik Yoba, and I play a cop on TV. I wrote this song because I need to see things change. Too many kids are dying in our streets from violence. I know because I was shot when I was 15. I survived, but each day there are 10 kids that don't, and we can do something if we just try. Be brave enough to walk away from violence and those that push it. Make a pledge to yourself to turn away from guns as a solution to solve your conflict. You can find smart, peaceful ways to settle arguments. I survived getting shot, but not everyone does. Don't let it happen to you. All you have to do is try. A message from the U.S. Department of Justice, the Crime Prevention Coalition, and the Ad Council. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LVE-191, Lincoln Park. In here tomorrow night. Stephen Jenkins in here tonight from Third Eye Blind. New CD is out today. Out of the Veins, the name of the CD. Yes, it is. We're going to hear another cut off the new CD in the uh, next hour. And uh, After you're gone, you got to leave it alone. Huh? I, I think so. Yeah, it's all right. Got 11 o'clock, uh, by the way, uh, yeah, Steven's just in here for the first hour. Oh, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't know. We'll see. Well, let's stay, fun. stay the second break after the uh, 11 break, and we'll play the song. All right, we'll do that. Drew will tap his foot feverishly. It'll feel but let's good. Get let's get, let's, let's get, get involved. Let's get into the action here. All right, here we go. Here we go. James? Yes. You're 26? Yes. What's up? Um, question for Drew. Drew, it, it seems odd, but the, the girl I'm dating has an excessively small vagina. Nice. And, is uh, it small or difficult to penetrate? Both. Uh, she said it was. she was born that way. She actually said when she was born, they had to uh, like, operate to actually open it. Oh, really? Wow. Yes, and I've never heard of that. But oh, it, no, that ha there's something called, there's, there's various disorders uh, of the genitalia. It's sort of in the class of what's called ambiguous genitalia, where they kind of sometimes can't tell if it's a male or a female, and yeah. they have to surgically move in one direction or the other. 
Mm-hmm. You think that's what that was? Yeah, well, it's sort of that kind of thing. Do it, they check all that stuff when you're born? Oh, yeah. Eh, yeah it's a weird detail. Yeah. Wait, you're, wait. you're freaking him out. This isn't. It's it's still a vagina. It's just a really small, tight one. Correct. Yeah. It had some closure. There's stuff. nothing ambiguous about that. Right. Okay. That's right. It's just it's odd, and it's it it's starting to make things uncomfortable. At first, it was something that we uh, just work with, and now it's it's I'm starting to have like chafing and wow. And mm-hmm. Things are starting. They're hurting for her. Mm, my goodness. And, Has she uh, gone to see a gynecologist to see if there are any procedures they can do to help out? No. True. What about uh, one of those wooden uh, shoe stretchers? Well, very interestingly, thank you. They have <laughs> really? they have graduated acrylic stretchers, basically. It's still it's not the kind spring of loaded tummy There's one called that, Jenny. That, it's the cobbler's friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's made out of maple. Um, but we're making fun of your pain, but be that as it that, That's the basic philosophy that some sometimes they use to try to improve these kinds of situations. That's how they make a vagina in the male to female transsexual. Mm-hmm. They have them sit on these graduated cylinders. Do they sit on them? Basically, I mean, they're not loose. I heard they put so them wait, in. Did she and go then, to the gynecologist? Yeah, yeah. They ultimately, they can put did them in. Did she go but, or no? Yeah, James, has she been to the gynecologist? Normally, I mean, normal visits, but not, you know. She needs to go and talk point. about this. There, there may be some fairly simple solutions to this. There are certainly some effective solutions. And uh, uh, there, there are all, you know, there's all sorts of uh, things that go on in this world in terms of how society handles the female genital region. Yeah. There's all this female genital mutilation where they sew up vaginas and cut off clitorises and stuff. And Just so, a cultural thing, Not in this thing, society. Right? Don't not not in this continent. East Africa. But, but the point is, people, a lot of people China, end up they here. they really whack things like that. But. And they they have restorative procedures. People end up fine and have normal sexual functioning after these things. Right. And uh, they may not be psychological. Emotionally, yeah, they're, they're, they're basket cases. So what, cases, what Dr. Drew is saying, and I'm just going to translate this, is is that go to the gynecologist and everything going to be irie. There you go. <laughs> All right, I mean, James? Not, not so much a, a surgical procedure as a, like an exercise. There might be, but again, these they might they might give these graduated cylinders to her and that sort of thing. And then get seen. Let's, okay. let's see if, if uh, that's really what there is. Maybe there's not an anatomical problem. Maybe she has vaginismus, which is a muscular spasm that, down there that can be corrected. So you get these things, they're ones bigger than the next. It's yes. like those Russian dolls. That's right. It's kind of sexy. Let me <laughs> give these graduated cylinders to you. Well, plus they're clear, right? Daddy loves you. Kind of cool. Color. <laughs> oh, <sorry. Yeah>. Emma? <laughs> Emma? Yeah. You're 15? Yes. You're an uh, eight-year-old, what? Eight-year-old girl? You babysit is uh, masturbating? Yeah, I was um, babysitting Sunday night, and I normally babysit every Thursday. And lately she's sort of been, I don't want to be vulgar or anything, but I guess you'd say she was pretty much humping the end of the couch. Mm. Just in front of you? In A spirited of, lass. Yeah. Young and, young girls will, will sort of manipulate themselves and do things like that. Just she seems of, very disturbed. Like she spoke with her grandmother making her take showers with her. And all right. Now, if, if, when they're disturbed, the sexuality just becomes a way... It becomes sometimes an outlet for aggression, sometimes a way of trying to manage feelings that they just have no other way to manage. It's almost well, like she cutting. Tried to run away before when I was babysitting. All right, she she so all right, so this is part of a more global picture of disturbance. Does she live with her grandmother? No, um, I was every Thursday now with her parents are at counseling, and I was I was cooking them dinner, and she's going, they're talking about I don't know what showers and then go yeah I take showers. She's like yeah I see this when Grandma makes me take showers with her. Well, showering the grandma not only has an emotional component to it, but the boobs resting on your head. Ew. For, Sorry. For that period of time. <laughs> the curtains. For an eight-year-old and down. and the beef curtain <laughs> thing. <laughs> okay. Sandbags on your head, the curtains. Emma was alive. trying so hard not to be vulgar. And I then, know. And then Adam hit. True went. But listen, a- Emma, I- the, you've identified somebody that you know has issues. They're being treated. There's a therapist. No, they're not being well. treated. You said the parents were in therapy. Um. Yeah, but I, well, my mom is very involved with the PTA at that school. And I came one day and she's like, you know, I don't really feel comfortable having you babysit these people anymore. And I was like, you know, I can't really do that unless you tell me why. And she said she had been speaking to the principal, and he said that she, her, she had huge problems. She'd be doing this in school. She was very creepy, and that her parents refused to t- admit she had a problem. That's why she's at that school, because the other school wouldn't let her go there. All right, so you can, the school's aware. Department of Social Services should be aware. The parents are seeing somebody. That person needs to be not notified. There's a child that needs help as well. You can't do anything about it, Emma. This is way more sophisticated problem. It is, to to Emma. You're 15 years old, and you've you've definitely done what you can do. And but, at but, a certain you know, point, you have to kind of. I, th- I think so. To contacting social services is one thing you can do. So. All right, all right, Nancy Drew. You gotta let this one go. Yeah. Stephen Jenkins in here tonight. One more break to with here. us, Stephen. We're gonna hear something from Third Eye Blind. We'll do that after this.
Okay, so I know there's nothing wrong with me. So what's up? So I was like you, and I used to think that these datelines were totally cheesy. Why can't I meet anybody? But I tried everything else and thought, what the hell? So I called the dateline and actually met a cool guy. I called the dateline and I hooked up with some cool people. Believe it or not, other normal people are out there looking to... 877-889-DATE. 1-800-LOVE-191. Okay, people, come on, settle down, settle down. Everyone settle down. Joanne DiCarlo. Present. William Robertson. Here. Raymond Vega. Yeah, I'm here. Peter Lawrence. John Earhart. Marona Maxwell. Andrea Thompson. Andrea Thompson. Every day, 10 children are killed by gunfire. 10 dead kids, 10 kids too many. The violence won't stop until you help stop it. To find out how, call 1-800-WE-PREVENT for free information. That's 1-800-WE-PREVENT. And please call today. Not one more lost life, not one more grieving family, not one more. A public service message from this station, the US Department of Justice, the Crime Prevention Coalition, and the Ad Council. Hello, my name is Rome, and I'm here for RAD. Music is very important to me, but what's most important is life. Please, please choose a designated driver. Don't drink and drive. You put the spell on me. I'm hooked, baby. Crazy love. What'll it be, lady? You think you might be pregnant. You need to see your doctor. You want to tell your family, and you need to stop drinking alcoholic beverages. The best choice for you and your baby is to stop drinking and call your doctor for advice. Congratulations. You were right. You're pregnant. If you have questions about drinking during your pregnancy, ask your doctor. Be good to your baby right from the start. A public service message from the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Hey, this is Kate Pearson from the B-52s. For RAD, getting drunk is your own business, but when you drive drunk, you make it everybody's business. Don't drink and drive. Be responsible, plan ahead, and choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives, and so should you. Baby, you want to go for a ride? Why, Vince, I didn't know you cared. I don't, but I'm looking for a baby. Uh, but, Vince, we're crash dummies. Well, your head's about the size of a baby. <laughs> what are you doing? Taking it off! Ah! I'm using your head in a rear-facing infancy. Why? To show how babies up front are in airbag danger. You know I get sick when I ride backwards and without a body. Up in front, kids won't know what hit them when the airbag blows. Then why do people put their kids up front, Vince? I don't know. Maybe it makes them feel better to see them sitting by their side. Although, if my baby looks like you, he'd ride in the truck. <laughs> and where are we going, Vince? Yeah, you know that brick wall with the big bullseye? Uh, I can see it vaguely in the back of my mind. Well, in two seconds, that's exactly where it's going to be. <laughs> Holy cow, Larry, you're embedded in the seat. Tire iron. I can't understand you. I'll go get a tire iron. Thank you. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your kids in the back seat. A message from the Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. Hi, this is Dennis Franz of NYPD Blue for RAD, recording artists, actors, and athletes against drunk driving. My character, Andy Sipwitz, has learned that there are a lot of things in life you have no control over. Fortunately, driving drunk isn't one of them. If you drink, don't drive. Choose a designated driver, and if one of your friends has been drinking, get the keys. Friends don't let friends drive drunk. A message from the Department of Transportation, Ad Council, National Association of Broadcasters, and RAD. Did you hear what Smokey said? Did you hear what Smokey said? I want to know if you heard what Smokey said. Smokey said only you. This is Marty Stewart from my pal Smokey Bear reminding you if you must burn debris or trash, do it safely. Check local laws on burning and never burn on dry when you bathe. 
Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Smokey didn't mention nobody else. Smokey said only you. This message from the USDA Forest Service and your state forester and advertising council. Catch a season's worth of touchdowns and a hell of a lot of hits. Tune into NFL Europe on Fox Sportsnet and Direct TV. Each play is a test, and most of the rest will get a shot at NFL glory. Check your local listings for broadcast times and be there for World Bowl 11 on June 14th. See tomorrow's NFL stars today. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Stephen Jenkins is here from Third Eye Blind. Here he is. Stephen and uh, the rest of Third Eye Blind can be uh, found on uh, the uh, Leno show tomorrow night. That's right. We're uh, new uh, CD is uh, out as we speak. Came out today. We're going to hear something else off of the CD. In uh, uh, take two calls. Sure. Then uh, two calls and a jam. Then a jam. That's radio. Shine. Yeah. You're 26? Yeah. What's up? Um, what's the doctor's name? Drew. His name is Dr. Drew. Dr. What, what's Drew. up, Shine? That's his name. You had mentioned something when you were talking to somebody earlier about um, spasms, vaginal spasms. Mm -hmm. Vaginismus? Yeah. Yeah. And I've had this problem for a while. It's and horrible, huh? Huh? It's awful. It's absolutely awful. Mm. And I don't know what to do about it, and it sucks. Does it make it impossible for him to penetrate? Yeah, I, I can't have sex. Be, when can't. you get one of these, do they? Do they it'll and and sometimes it'll. La I mean, they'll last all day for two days, three days. Well, True. You had this all all through high school. How did you beat it? A I didn't. Have anus Anus nismus. <laughs> How did you lick anus nismus? Did, oh, jeez. Well, uh, Shine, sometimes these things are sort of spinal reflexes that are just sort of entrained into your musculature. More often than not, though, at least on this show, we find that people have a history of some kind of sexual abuse or. No. Something like that. And we're going to so ferret it, it out right it now. Everything was uh, good growing up? Oh, no, yeah. No physical abuse, anything of that sort? Oh, no. Are you are you uh, uptight in general? Anxious? I have anxiety attacks. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Are you afraid of the ocean? Do I what? Mm -hmm. Are you afraid of the ocean? Do I? No. No? You like to swim out into the surf? I used to. What would be, uh, that's an interesting uh, thing Stephen brings up. Like, I, I was thinking flying. Like, yeah. if you were to Flying's just a pick a, two or three sort of major things, I would think swimming out into the surf would be something that somebody had anxiety would have trouble with. I would think flying. I used to surf when I was a teenager. Yeah, see, people, they, sometimes they people find their own thing. People, yeah, people with anxiety often will overcome their anxiety, and water is an interesting place where they tend to do that. Yeah, in it's my a, experience. Mm. being out of control. Yeah. What about but like flying uh, is one where they can never be in control. What about flying? Sure. I don't like flying. Yeah, there you go. All right. Yeah. yeah. Now, what if a guy was trying to nail you while you were flying? Yeah, you probably have a pretty hard time. Be difficult, though. That okay. could be like negative times a negative and become a positive. Have you ever? <laughs> have I think Adam's onto something here. I think it's yeah. basically what he's trying to get out here is the Mile High Club. Have you sought any treatment for any of this besides the? No, I had never. I didn't even think that it was a problem until you said something. Well, it can like, be. I don't listen to your show, so I'm glad that I was listening. It can be normal. There can be a normal spectrum of this, but uh, shines a delight. It's like, no. what's the doctor's name? <laughs> I don't listen to your <laughs> show. Oh, it's your crappy show. <laughs> How much your more uh, good free advice you have, Buck? Chamomile sure. tea, deep breaths, and watch Swedish porn. But, but Shine, you, you should be. There, there's a lot of information out on the web about this. There's even like a vaginismus society and things. And there's, there's, you can look it up and see what things are being done. That's www.vaginismus.com. <laughs> I don't think that's the site, but you can look. Really? Like, do a Google search. It's gonna be a hell of a meeting. The vaginismus sign, nice? like the guys banging the gavel. <laughs> Come to order. Uh, can we read the minutes from the last vaginismus meeting? All right. But th there may be lectures you can do. There may be nothing. Maybe not something you have to really worry about. But uh, look into it a little bit well, and talk she, to your doctor. I don't understand. She said she didn't know she and had I think it. You, well, I think it, you should check it, into the whole the whole anxiety attacks, you know, these things yeah, being related, because they think, usually are. I think Stephen's right. It's more of a global issue with anxiety. She didn't know that it was a disorder. She knew that she kind of spasm. She didn't know there was anything sort of... Are you unable to have sex? No, I can have sex. But sometimes. But sometimes right. I can't. There okay. You yeah, you have a boyfriend? Huh? Do you have a boyfriend? I'm married. You're married. And mm -hmm. and even with your husband, 
you'll you'll put together three or four good sessions and then and then the fifth one trouble uh, well, yeah, and it, it just depends on how my day goes. If, yeah. if I have a bad well, okay. day. Well, okay, then you, did, on. Okay, you need to start yeah. having good days, and then you're <laughs> going to have good I, sex. You need to have, yeah, well, that's what I think. But that's right. It doesn't work that way. All right. Mm, okay, it does work that much. way. It mm. does work that way, but you need to make sure you have those good days. Oh. That's what's not working. Yeah. You're not getting the good yeah. days. So. <laughs> okay. and, uh, Hot bath. I don't have bad days, or at least I don't announce that uh, I have bad days anymore. Tuesdays just kind of go one on into That's the next. So true. Like I, I have bad days because when, when people, you know, you get you get hit with lots of sick. We get a bunch of people yeah. dying. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's Sterling. Sort of overwhelming days. I think that's what makes yeah. a bad day when it's just too much. Hello, Sterling. Yeah. What's up? Hey. What's up? What's up? What's up? Sterling can uh, talk now. Go ahead. Go, Sterling. Okay. I was kind of worried. I caught your show the other night, and you guys were talking about. Um, a guy called and said he was bleeding out of his ass, and I was, and I, I mean, I didn't hear all this, like, I didn't hear all what you guys were saying, but I heard Dr. Drew, Drew say that, you know, it can be kind of serious, and um, it's kind of got me worried, because it's happened to me for, like, the last year, every few months, it it kind of comes up on me, and I don't know what's all going right. on. All right, I have the strange feeling he's building to a punchline. No, I don't believe him. But be that as it may, uh, bleeding, rectal bleeding is a medical emergency. It can become into very brisk, and you can bleed to death. Uh, in a young person like you, most commonly it would be an internal hemorrhoid, but it can be ulcerative colitis, it can be Crohn's disease, it can be polyps, it can be cancer. See, that's, and, and, that's, that's what I caused when you said polyps, and I mean I've only known one person with that. But Well, you're young to be getting this. True. What about just a good basic uh, hard-ass, dry-ass syndrome? Well, that's what gets the internal hemorrhoids going. But be that as it may, you, you, the only way you ever know what is causing the bleeding is someone has to go up there and look. And you have, it's basically an absolute indication for that. Now, it's not their entire body. It's just their torso. Mm, they just like look up the... the they, how far? What do they look with? A the colonoscope. They do? Mm. What, no feeling around? They might feel around before they put the scope in, yes. They yeah, but what about, what about just a field job? Will that tell you anything? No, you can see if you feel a mass in there, you know something. But you still got to go in there and look at it and then take pieces of it if it's anything. It's good times. times. Yeah. Can stress cause this? or If it's hemorrhoids, yeah, certainly. And uh, But, again, we, it's all speculation. Do until... you bleed a lot? I mean, is it like... No, no, it's not much. But, like I say, I mean, I kind of notice it, like, if I'm more stressed or if I've been working, like, if I've been working hard. Yeah, know, I, it, that's labor. more of the hemorrhoid kind of situation. True. But, what, um, what's worse? Blood in the stool is worse than blood on the paper, right? It's and the then... same. Blood on the uh, plow is a uh, John Mellencamp song. No, but blood, any blood out your rear, no matter how it presents itself, it has to be looked into. So you're saying yeah. blood in the stool, same as blood on the paper? Yeah. No. Well, the reason, I mean, I'm just saying. What would be different would be blood dripping out. That's different. Right. And that's what it is sometimes. Okay. But I don't have insurance, and I don't, you know, like, I don't know who to, like, who to go see a doctor-wise, you know? So I'm not sure you're what in, you're in that's why. Tucson? What's that? I'm in Phoenix. It should be a county facility there. Just go to a county yeah. hospital, any any kind like, of like any county. I I just I'm pretty new to the city. Like I don't yeah. really know any county health about it. county health systems. Just uh, okay. be a lot of waiting in line, but they can handle it no problem. It, it, the no. best way to find out where the local county uh, health system is in your town is just go find a hobo. <laughs> <laughs> follow him. <laughs> He'll end up there. Yes, just follow a hobo. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks, fellas. All right. Good Get times. Good night. Good time. Good now time. it's time for a song. <laughs> let's, uh, yeah. On, on that note, that makes me makes me want to hear music. I thought we were gonna get something really exciting. Can we? Let's do one more call. We'll Come get on. A, I, I want to get something good right. here. Well, let's let's we got like pick bloody one, ass thing. <clears throat> I can't read this. Tell me something good here. Let's see. Uh, kiss the other chance? guy. I was hoping that a couple would right. fill in while during the song. We get you one good we're one. Get something good. Here. <clears throat> well, let's let's go for a couple good ones during the song. We'll find a couple good ones. All right. Guy, All right. Guy thinks his girlfriend's cheating with his best friend. All right. We'll Let's that. go with that one. Then All we'll right. do a song. All right. Can All right. we do that? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Harold. Yeah. You're 25. Yeah. Harold, this is Stephen Jenkins from Third Eye Blind, and I know a little something about cheating and lying and crying. So we're gonna get this fixed up right now. What's the problem? All right, man. My best friend, you know, he obviously he's my best friend for a reason, but he comes over, and I'm not blaming him for anything, but. Um, you know, we'll be playing cards and stuff, and I'll catch my girl out of the corner of my eye looking at him funny, or she just acts weird when he's around and mm. stuff. Yeah. Mm. How does she act weird? I don't know. She's Paint the picture. All giddy. Giddy? Is yeah, almost like, <sighs> I can't really explain it. Then she she's more freaky in bed on the nights he's over. Good oh boy. Well, let, let, let me ask weird. this. Hey, your friend, assess him physically. Do other girls like him? Oh yeah, he's he's a pimp. He's 
a lot of people tell him he looks like Justin Timberlake. Mm-mm. So, so a lot of girls like him. Does he have a girlfriend? Oh no, 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 no. He's not that guy. You does mean she he's... have any? Does she have any girlfriends that you think are kind of hot looking? Yeah, she's got some pretty friends. Right, and you see him, and you're like, you kind of, you, you know, you can sort of image what it would be like to. Well, yeah, you know, I'm a man. I watch the man show. Right. You know what the problem is? Uh, What's that? Let me tell you something about about girls. They are dirty and naughty, and they're horny, just like guys are. And the whole thing about Western culture, about how girls are sort of prim and proper, absolutely, completely not true. And all the thoughts that you have that roll through your head, they roll through hers as well. It's just how it goes, and you have to accept that, and you have to like get the whole image of like, you know, this this it's it's called the Madonna whore complex, and it's 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 this thing that operates in Western culture, and Adam's suffering from it. We we try to help him as best we can, but we're, it's a work in progress. Yeah, you have I to do just think let Madonna's go. Madonna's a whore. I I can't help it. I don't, all the counseling in the world is not going to clear that up, Stephen. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sticking with it. Yeah. Hey uh, hey Harold. Yeah. This doesn't seem like much to build a case on, though. Her yeah. getting I, but a little giddy. You know what? Giddy. You know how those instincts sometimes are right, and he he sees how she's looking at him. Well, here's... Let, let's hope it's just an attraction and nothing yeah. has actually been consummated there. But the I, you know you don't want to distrust your instincts when things say you feel names, right. Am... I usually think when these th- kind of things are going down, if you're not drunk, yeah. right, it's probably true. Yeah. It's good and point. so, but the problem but is here, here's the thing. Drunk? This is what we're trying to say. <laughs> let's be, be honest. So what? You know, no, I mean, she likes him. Is, okay, I, you know. I think uh, I know if, if it came down to it, I know he wouldn't. I'm not to say he wouldn't. I'm sure he would like get her naked in the room. Are you gonna get married? And then call are, me. Are you, are you gonna marry her? Day, you know? Harold. Am I married? No. Are you gonna marry her? I don't know. No plan. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is she strings up or not? Let yeah. me. Well, well, hold on a second though. So far, her having vigorous sex with you on nights where he seems to be around is not That's much. That's not much. And you catching her out, of, you, her out of the corner of your eye looking at him, it's not really that's it's not something. really too much either. It's something, but not well, anything. Okay. Right. He, he's, he's a pretty pimp guy. You know, he's got a good job. He drives a nice car. So, you're, so you're threatened by him. That's a different issue. Yeah, but uh, let me ask well, this. Really not, because I, I work at the same place. I make the same amount of money, but... You know, she's always asking, oh, like when he's not around, she's like, oh, how's he doing? You know, like, but well, can you live with it? Time. Can you live with can you live with her having like a flirtation with him? Because these kinds of things are going to happen if you go out in the long term. This kind of stuff happens, and you know, w- women become flirtatious around men. That's like that's their job well, in the yeah. order of things. The other you know? thing too, yes, a lot of women feel that it's their job to be sort of sexual toward men, or at least have men any man in the room attracted to them. Was she at was any she, given was time? Was she sexually abused? Harold? It no. is their job. No. She had no, she had no I history. Think so anyway, she never brought it up to me. Okay. All right. You might ask her about that because if she has a history of sexual abuse, she will constantly need that kind of sexualization in relation to men, and then she'll be surprised when they respond with a sexual she's overture. Not, it's not every, you know, this isn't the, the this is. But know. other than that, but we're, we're going too far. Like, they're just yeah. being flirty, right, and right. I think you have to like, you have to just ask yourself. It's like this is going to pass eventually. Flirtations always do. She might have a little crush on him. Can you live with it? Yeah. If yeah. you can't, then you have to call them both on it. If you can, three weeks from now, you'll know the answer. All right. And has she ever cheated before on you? No. No? Uh, how long have you been with her? Uh, I mean, I say no, but I, do I really know that? Uh, uh, Harold, you know, Harold, Harold, you're just an idiot. I'm <laughs> you're really just you're, you're, you, Yeah. Look, if you got these kind of doubts and just break it up, it'll drive you nuts. All right, Harold's just. This is going to end in. Harold's this a, is going to end in. Their, their a, numbers might not match. You a know black what I mean? eye. Yes, the numbers aren't matching. Well, just here. the fact okay. that his name is Harold. Yeah, that's trouble right yeah. there. Yeah, good point. But this is also why twenty-five-year-old guys really shouldn't be getting married. Yeah. I mean, think about that energy, Stephen. Think about the energy you had at twenty-five with the with the ladies, and you know, jealous, and you, you're either you looked at him. You're either angry about guys in the future. Oh, I'm still stuck. You know, I don't know how to behave any you better. Talk it's to that just, guy. I gotta, you know, but I mean, rap, think, think where you were at when you were 25 or 18. <sighs> well, <sighs> Harold's a little bit more confused because I mean, he's got the, you know, he his mean, name's Harold. Gonna walk, you know, if you're gonna, if, he, if if his friend's a pimp, then sort of ask yourself, what would my friend do? He'd be pimpy right. in this situation. So you got to get your limp on and just kind of. Let things roll off your back because there's nothing. There's just nothing worse than a jealous guy. It's just That's it's not true. attractive. That is very true. It's like bad cologne. It, it doesn't. Yes. It never works. Here, here. That's right. All right. That's a good. Place what would James to, uh, Bond do? Uh, he That's would. A, uh, he would not be named Harold Bond. 
we'll uh, hear a little something from uh, Third Eye Blind. That's my new album coming yep. out. It's today. It came out today. Yep. Out of the vein. It is. Uh, I wanted to actually call the album this. We were going to call the album Crystal Baller. I thought this was the greatest title, uh, the crystal ball, you know, looking into a provident future and then being a baller, hip hop right. vernacular for right. shot caller, somebody who's in charge of their world. So this was this thing that I just thought was so witty and great. And, and what happened? I was like, no. <laughs> it, it's, we don't want to name the album after a song. It's like, let it bleed, dude. Rolling Stones, what's wrong with that? So anyway, it turned out just to be a song, um, a song called Crystal Baller. And here Not it is. the album is. out of the vein. Here it is. I close my eyes and I see a freak. I think it's me and I'm afraid to speak. I keep on going from week to weakness, way out in the line. Dreaming lives we could have had before. The heat is broke down, open doorways, friends of yours. Tell me more, what happens in your mind? Ooh, oh. Can we try and take the hammer? That is Third Eye Blind, the CD, 
Out of the Vein is Out as We Speak. Another good song off the new album, which you should all go out and get. Leno, tomorrow night. You can uh, see the guys performing live, at least live while you're at home. Steven is here. We're going to do uh, one more call before uh, he clears out of here. Sarah? Hello? You're 15? Sarah. Yes. What's up? Uh, well, I've been dating this guy for a couple months. We could gamble. Ooh. ooh. Yeah. Steven, done any gambling with us ever? Okay. Yeah. Hold we're on gonna, a second. Sarah, hold on. We're going to... Got a v- very gonna very gamble, young girl voice. That you. means it's gambling time. We haven't done it in a while. Steven, you got a dollar on you? Drew, you want some... I, you, you know, I, I think I got me. nothing but tens. You want to do a big stakes game? No. Drew, Drew won't do it. He won't do it? He won't do it? I'll here. do it. Let's I'll loan you a buck. Thank I you. Got, I got five. Okay? I think five's the smallest thing I got. Now I'm supporting Drew's habit. And I'm, I'm we just got to get William Bennett involved in this. Put my five in. <laughs> he lost $8 million. But I'm a moral poker. man. <laughs> all right. All we heard. Okay, here's her question. She's 15. She lost her virginity to boyfriend. No orgasm, I guess, on her part. It says here on the board she's not attracted to him. Or she's does, does that mean she's I think this suggests, does it mean she's not attracted okay. to him? Okay. Now we heard the real little girl voice, Drew. And we heard the voice. Yeah. You want to go first? No, go ahead, you guys. I'll go last. No, no, no. no. All right. Go again, we're, uh, we're gambling on her past. I'm going with uh, just uh, straight and basic sexual abuse. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. You want an age or a date or a time? I'll, I'll try to come in with that. All right, you're going sexual abuse mm-hmm. too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I'm going to say it's the, uh, it was the uncle in... Well, you don't have to take sexual abuse. You could take... Oh, no, I'm going with the... I'm going to get... No, it's... it's. He is not to be left out. All right. How uh, dare you? Could have gone with alcoholic uh, dad. It was the... Uh, it was the butler with the uh, candlestick with the rope. Uh, in the, Colonel in Mustard. The, it was Colonel Mustard. In the, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say family member, um, okay. sexual abuse. Okay. Uh, somewhere around nine. Nine. Ooh, I was going family for, member. Yeah, I'll go for. I'll try to zero anymore. Uh, eight. Neighbor, something Ooh, like that. Oh, neighbor. And uh, but to some real profound abandonment. Like she was like left. I don't right. know but true, you'll always feel the talker. Into that. So you're gonna go abuse and dad's gone. No, no like more like foster home or something. Like really a bad abandonment. All right, I'm going. Uh, I'm going stepdad. Seven. Sarah. Oops. Wrong, wrong, wait a minute. Oops. Sarah. Yeah. Any sexual abuse? Not that I'm aware. Of. Oh, please, God, please let there be sexual <laughs> abuse. Come on. <laughs> no, you're wrong, Adam. I, I got a five spot riding out here. Nothing. No. Come here and give me a hug. <laughs> are your par- are your are your parents still together? No. No, My they're mom not. Remarried. They're what? My mom remarried. Remarried to an evil, sexually abusive stepfather. <laughs> yes. No. No. All right. And uh, I I I know I'm a horrible guy. I'm so disappointed that you haven't been sexually. Yeah, abused. you realize, Sarah, this is the moment where you can just break it all down and tell everybody everything, right? Yeah. We're getting yeah. the real deal, right? She's starting to sound more normal, actually. I know, I know. Sarah Very might have just been nervous, just a bunch of... <laughs> so, uh, Hi, Sarah, we're a bunch of hacks on the radio <laughs> yeah. here. Everything, so uh, every, your your childhood was uh, okay with you? Um, No, I didn't have that good of a childhood. Mm. What, what happened? Um, Nothing really. I just, I guess I've kind of been crazy my whole life. My parents divorced when I was early. How old? Um... I think maybe four. And what, what was your mom? Did you live with your mom for a while? Yeah, I've always lived with my mom. What was she like? Oh, I hate her. Why? She's a bitch to me. Oh, Does she do drugs or alcohol or something? No, she's straight as a pencil. And was she around all the time for you, or did she just sort of leave you like a latchkey child? Kind of like a latchkey child, yeah. Oh, please. Everyone You've heard that, that phrase before, Sarah? Yeah. Where'd you hear it? Health class. After school health class. special. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so you were, so did, were, you, were you taken care of properly? Older sister kind of looked out for me, but she was on drugs. So, okay. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and no one ever. Your touched older sister doesn't have boyfriends who can like to come over and say make out and stuff. <laughs> yeah, no one ever touched you or did anything to you, you didn't like. No. Huh? Come on, Drew just had the surgery. He's low on cash. Come on. So now I we're going to talk about get, sexual satisfaction of a fifteen-year-old girl. Didn't, here? didn't somebody um, like play doctor with you or something? <laughs> No. Never happened anything like that. Cause I just get the sense that you were, you were here's, here's my sense. Again, I get this abandonment, unsupervised. And kind of people were sort of doing things to you that you might not have been all that, you know, you might have felt helpless in situations with people, even people your own age. Maybe. When you know. did you lose your virginity? 
Um, probably about a month ago. A month 15, ago. Okay. And uh, that's why you're calling. Yeah. And your boyfriend is how old? Well, he's not my boyfriend. Oh. That's the thing. The, uh, the, the penis? <laughs> the penis. It's attached 17. to a guy who's Pe- how old? Excuse me, penis donor. <laughs> penis donor is uh, how old? 17. And 17. what's the problem? Um, well, I was just reading this article, and it just kind of stuck in my mind that maybe I'm not getting orgasms because I'm not... You know, this is such a drag. you got this, this society right now where a 15-year-old is not allowed to be 15 because she's reading, she's reading some article about, like, her, her sexual satisfaction. <laughs> and this has started, like, you know, you've got, like... You're it's such a bummer to me that that you you, you know this starts with like ten year olds are out yeah. there dressing like they're they're teenagers and you totally you don't get any like childhood or play or anything like that. It's just all right. So Sarah it breaks my heart, Sarah. Yeah, you're 15. You you may be a few years off of a good orgasm. Okay, yeah. I'd had 5600 by the time I was 15, but it was at my own hand. Okay. All right. So you just, yeah, I agree with Steven. Just uh, be a 15 year old, yeah, be a teenager. Can you, d- d- just, you know, can, can I just make Slow a down. recommendation Slow to down. you? It's called softball. Just join the team <laughs> or soccer. Have you ever played soccer? No, I'm not in sport. Yeah. Well, you know what? Check it out. <laughs> go try it. Go out there. And even if you're really bad and you're third string, just go, just go see what it's like. I agree. Because there's that, this uh, like, sex is incredibly complicated. And 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 uh, no, yeah, I, I I agree with the uh, softball. The, and those... Don't read those totally whack ass magazines. It's just forget it. These are written by hacks or just trying to tell stories. That's sort of, right. Sort of like us. And yeah. It's just you know, just stay away from it. All right, we will. Uh, by That's the way, what I had to say about it, Sarah. So rock <laughs> on, because I'm out of here. Steven is uh, getting <laughs> punchy. He saved his worst for last. Third Eye Blind, everyone. The uh, CD is out today, Out of the Vein. Steven is uh, out of here now, going to do uh, Leno tomorrow night. We'll uh, see, see him, him then. Back. This yep. is a draw. And uh, Steven, always a delight to see you. Always a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. We'll it's be, good to see you guys. We'll be back after this. Hello? Who is this? Uh, this is Loveline. 1-800-LOVE-191. Loveline will be right back. Loveline is brought to you by Trojan, America's number one condom, the most trusted for over 80 years. This is Rocky Moselle of the International Star Registry. For over 20 years, one gift has become the most unforgettable gift ever received. Naming a star after someone. For $48 and a call to 800-282-3333, the Star Registry will send a full-color parchment certificate, sky charts to locate the star, and a fascinating booklet on astronomy. The star name will be recorded in book form in the U.S. Copyright Office. Call the Star Registry now at 800-282-3333 or visit StarRegistry.com for the gift that is remembered forever. CBS Thursday, after a special CSI at 8, 7 central. The year's most anticipated hour of TV, the CSI season finale a violent robbery. A CSI investigator caught in the crossfire. And what happens next will shock America. No! And on Without a Trace, a hostage crisis. Bullets fire. We can't just sit around here anymore. Now, to rescue the victims, one FBI agent will sacrifice everything. The Without a Trace season finale, CBS Thursday. Every day, 10 children are killed by gunfire. Where have all the children gone? Long time passing. Where have all the children gone? Long time ago. Where have all the children gone? Gone to graveyards one by one. Killing won't stop unless you help stop it. Call 1 800 We Prevent to find out what you can do. Not one more lost life, not one more grieving family, not one more. Oh, when will we ever learn? A public service message from the U.S. Department of Justice, the Crime Prevention Coalition, and the Ad Council. What's a frequency can Hi, this is Mike Mills and Peter Buck of R.E.M. For Rad, Rockers Against Drunk Driving. You know, it's okay to rock and roll and party. Just let someone else do the driving. Please don't drink and drive, and don't drive with someone else who's been drinking. Thank you. What's the frequency can at this show? Benzer 
Hey, what are you doing after the game? Well, there's a big party at Jason's. His parents are out of town and there's gonna be plenty to drink. <laughs> I think I'll pass. You're gonna pass up a party? Well, it sounds more like trouble than a party. Make the right choice. Underage drinking always means trouble. It's dumb, dangerous, and illegal. You're gonna miss all the fun. I'm gonna stay out of trouble. A public service message from the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. If you're between the ages of 12 and 18, you're invited to play our Name That Theme Song Challenge. Just listen to the following songs and try to identify the popular TV shows they come from. Number one. Number two. Come and knock on our door. Come and knock on our door. We've been waiting for you. We've been waiting for you. Three. Baseball It's the bigger love. Four. Now, if you can name two, you know your TV. If you can name three, you're a certified TV master. If you can name four or more, you probably need to get off the couch and get outside. Run, walk, jump, pedal, paddle, blade, board, kick, dribble, spike, get up, get out. A public service message brought to you by the President's Council on Physical Fitness and Sports and the Ad Council. Hey everybody, it's the Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Lincoln Park in here tomorrow night. Stephen Jenkins has uh, left the building. Always good to see him. Stephen, uh, definitely a, uh, a a different spirit, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but uh, but a good guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, enjoyed seeing him. So uh, maybe we'll see him tomorrow night. We'll go get a drink or something. All right, Drew. Mm. You doing all right? I don't know. Not feeling too good? Mm. What's the matter, buddy? Hurts. All right. All right. Nuts are swelling up. All right. Yeah. You got to heal thyself. See what they sound like when I move <laughs> around? <laughs> that was Drew's nuts. They sound like an old pirate ship. <laughs> Jennifer? Yes. You're 19? Yes. Hello? Hi. Yeah. What's going on? Um, well, I don't know. Whenever I talk to my friends, everybody talks about how they um, can't get off anyway, but like when their clit is stimulated, you know what I mean? But for me, I can only orgasm vaginally. Well, the people like well, you Hold on a second. What are you doing there, Jennifer? Director set? Me? Yeah, what are you doing? Putting paneling up in your den? Oh, no. Just relaxing in my room. Really? Yes. Okay. Can, can, you, uh, can you go shut the TV? I'm sorry. <laughs> and the radio. And the computer. And just hold still for a second. Okay. All right. So you only have an orgasm through penetration. Right. But you don't have one through oral sex. I can't. You can't. That okay. is a, a very interesting twist, it, it, especially it is, for a 19-year-old. Well, these, these women typically are multi-orgasmic. Is that you, Jennifer? Um, well, it never really usually can get that far. You can't have more than one? Well, not because of me. The guy can't keep going. Yeah. But you could have more than one. I assume I could. Yeah. Well, why does he, he finishes right after you finish or? If it makes it that long, yeah. Is this the only guy you've been with? Um, no. And how long do guys normally go with you? Um, it depends on the guy. Some guys it could be two hours, some it's 20 minutes. All right. Now the guy that you're with, with for two hours, did you have more than one orgasm? Yes. Okay, the that's my point. We're the world's okay. dumbest callers. Okay, just that's the point I'm making, is that women that have vaginally orgasms only usually are multi-orgasmic, and also sometimes are into anal sex, too. That's Ooh. the same um, thing. Haven't been able to try it. But are interested in it. Drew, do you, you very, notice that you, very interested you, in it. You say anal sex. Whenever you say anal sex, you do it with, like, a ventriloquist. Like, your, your mouth is almost I'm, I'm closed. I'm afraid to say it. Your teeth are clenching, you go... Your, your mouth's gaping open. It's flopping around the whole time. Women have done it and can do it with anal <laughs> So you need a, you know what you need, Drew? A uh, ventriloquist dummy, yeah. anal sex dummy. Yeah. So it's like, uh, hey. Uh, Jerry Mabloney. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, not hold. Do you know when you can hear uh, people having a anal sex? Yes. <laughs> Drew, say anal sex while, while drinking a cup of water. All right. So, uh, Jennifer. yeah. Jennifer? Yes. So that's you, and that is that is about probably less than 10% of women. And that is really? a unique talent, and we don't know why there's this group of women that <laughs> are different. You're fine, yes. And w- the, in, in your group, you tend not to have a real significant refractory phase. That's what's different. Not, not only is there this sort of not... You don't like direct st- clitoral stimulation. You also tend not to have refractoriness. You'll keep having orgasms. God bless you. Yeah, it you are. Sucks. Uh, it sucks. Yeah. Why? Because everybody wants to go down, and it's just not working. No, they don't no, want to no, go no, down. No, they They're think just... you need that. They don't what? understand. They think you need that. They think that's important for you. But if they knew that that was not important, you can tell them up front. They'll be uh, applauding. Wonderful. Celebrating. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Are you really? That's not a problem. Just tell. You know what you do if you don't want to make it uncomfortable and you're going to have sex with a guy and he starts to go down on you? You just go, oh, I'm too hot. I want you in me. And the guy will be like, <laughs> done and done. <laughs> done. Oh. Let me tell you when that, that going down on thing. It's like, you know, those movies where uh, the, uh, the poor guy from the wrong side of tracks all of a sudden is sitting at the table with the queen and the king and their piece of chicken lands on his t- plate and he's looking around and he's looking at his fork and he's not sure what to do with it. Then he sees the queen pick it up and yes. take a big bite in his hands and he goes, oh, yeah. and he just grabs it with his hand. That's how we feel when we dodge the oral sex bullet. We're like, what? You, Plus, I'm, I'm going to go down. Oh, you want you want me in? Done. Guys also, Done. their masculine egos are gratified by their penis causing the orgasm. Guys yes. want that to happen. Yes. And so when they can do that, it's just they're fine. They're happy. Right, and it's not most women that get that. It's very, and I wonder if we'll ever know what that difference is. But uh, Je- it is Jennifer, different. yeah. All right, so it, now th- I'm a little confused. You're with a guy now. No, well, sort of. In that way, I am. You have a like friends with benefits kind of thing Ex- going. Exactly. And you cannot convey to him that you're really not into the oral, or. Oh no, this guy, it's okay. Yeah, it'll be okay like, with he, everybody. He's, he's cool. He doesn't really try all that much but that's no. a big big man i do most of the trying with everything so. oh boy what uh what are you doing with this guy by the way he uh busts a nut in 10 seconds he's doing you're doing all the work he's he's not interested in even attempting the oral what what, <laughs> what are you doing with this guy i don't know yeah i mean you're in love with him basically does he have another girlfriend uh he's seeing somebody else yeah i just yeah. get that loud he's, and clear he's like yeah. yeah all right jennifer what are you doing I don't know. You're 19. I, you're, I ask myself that every day. You're attractive, right? I hope so. <laughs> you you have the uh, vaginal orgasms. <laughs> Get with a guy who can appreciate you. I'm trying to look. You, you know. You know what's any, interesting? Got any suggestions? Jennifer, be, yeah, dump this guy. <laughs> and, yeah, so you'll be Free available mind up for somebody little. else. Jennifer, wait, wait. Do you, do you do you when you hear your friends talking about not being able to have an orgasm vaginally? Did you at first think they were kind of lying or that they weren't you know didn't quite understand what they were talking about even? Kind of, yeah. Because when I when I've talked to other women who are multi orgasmic, they go, uh, "What are my friends? They're they're lying. What's the what? Is, why are they why do they make up these stories? It's like it doesn't make sense to them. Even it's so easy for them. <laughs> True. Why? True. You bite onto one thing, you never let it go. I know. And I love it when you steer the callers. Did you you make a good attorney actually? Mm-hmm. If you didn't hate them so much, you know what I'm saying. Keep moving. All right. What about those doctor attorneys? Yeah, that's a weird batch there, mm-hmm. isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's like as a doctor, aren't 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 these your arch enemy? This is your nemesis. These attorneys, they're going to become one. No one ever. It, if you can't beat them, join them. That's sort of thing. Yeah, are there attorneys that become doctors? I've seen doctors mm-hmm. that become yeah, attorneys. Around, yeah. Mike. Yeah. You're 27. Yeah. What's up? Uh, not much. I uh, really like listening to you guys' show. Thanks, my Mike. Quick, my uh, question is, uh, my girlfriend, she likes to. Uh, while we're having sex, she likes to have her breasts squeezed really, really hard. Yeah, yeah. how uh, rare! Yeah, yeah, and and uh, I'm I'm just concerned that can that cause any health problems or um, no? I you mean, pull one off. Yeah, yeah. If you rip it off. Be bleeding. Yeah, yeah that would not be good. But no, there's nothing uh, you can't cause traumatic cancer or something like that. Does, no. Doesn't cause any um, like blood clots or anything. No, uh, you could get something called mastitis, I guess, which is inflamed glands, but. I've not heard of that precipitating that. Would that would that make her boobs uh, hurt um, a lot? Like if you, if you bruise them, yeah. do they hurt a lot now? They do. 
Yeah. Well, how much? How vigorous is the kneading? Well, she just likes she just likes some, you know, squeezed real hard. So you know, I mean. <sighs> Mike, have you ever thought about writing a fiction or screenplays? Have I thought of it? Yeah. You make a great auctioneer too. No. <laughs> yeah, I always like the. How be down three. I got to be down three. <laughs> How vigorous is the squeezing going on? Uh, <laughs> she likes some squeeze real hard. <laughs> oh, so expressive. Okay. So right. clear. I mean, I close my eyes and I just see a kaleidoscope of images. colors and images, images oh, in yeah. front of me. Mike. Yeah. So I, I know she likes some squeeze real hard, but I mean, y you know what you're doing. I, yeah. what, what you think that would hurt if the, someone did that to you kind of thing? Uh, yeah, it would, it would hurt mine, yeah. Yeah, so maybe maybe you ought to Back ease down off a bit, just yeah. a little bit. <laughs> well, I, I, well, I tried to, but she, she likes it. Right. I mean, I've, yeah. I've, I've, right. I've, I've been concerned about it myself because, mm -hmm. you know, I like it's got to hurt. But, Mike. Yeah. Let me ask you some questions. Yeah. What uh, what trade you in? I'm a structural welder. Yeah. Mm, metal. Yeah, I got metal, and I got trade. <laughs> trade aluminum? and metal. I got trade and metal. Yeah. Is it aluminum? Maybe it went to Anderson wants no, to uh, know if it's aluminum. It's not aluminum. No, it's iron. Iron yeah. worker. That's right. Anderson, why are you asking? And by the way, structural metal is not. They don't make any high rises out of aluminum. That sounds like brain damage. Oh, no, I see. But, no, but, no, but I used to do aluminum. I used to build featherlight trailers in Iowa. Uh-huh. For, NAS for NASCAR racers. Uh-huh. Anderson, uh, part of a lawsuit. Uh, he never actually did any Heliarc work. He never actually uh, welded any aluminum, Anderson. But he still has brain damage, and he wants to He wants to Blame basically... Uh, yeah. I smoked out of cans, bro. He <laughs> drank a few Cokes. He, he's, he, had, uh, he smoked out of the same Pepsi can all the way through high school, and he claims that's, uh, that's nice. what's caused his hair to be that way. All right, we're gonna take uh, Watak and smell metal on a man. It was good. We're good gonna uh, we're gonna take ourselves a uh, little break. We'll be right back after this. Love line. We'll be right back. Hey, this is Dan from Tonic for RAD, Recording Artists Against Drunk Driving, reminding you that drunk drivers are still the number one killer of young adults in this country. Please use your head and save your life and those on the road. Always choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives. You should too. You can never go home again. You can never go home again. Hey, what's up? This is Darius from Hootie and the Blowfish for Rad, recording artists against drunk driving. When you go out and party and you get drunk, then drive, you're not only loaded, you're a loaded weapon. When you celebrate, designate. Choose a designated driver every night. Remember, music lives and so should you. Bob Sheehan from Blues Traveler for Rad, recording artists against drunk driving. I like to party just as much as the next guy, maybe even more. But the one thing I won't do after I've had a few is get in the car and drive. Don't blow it. Always choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives and so should you. I wish that I knew what I know now. When I was younger. Hello, this is Rod Stewart for Rad recording artists against drunk driving. When you go out and party, get drunk, then drive, you're not only loaded, you're a loaded weapon. When you celebrate, designate. Choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives and so should you. I wish that I knew what I know now. Hi, I'm Serenity and these are my friends, Missy and Stephanie. You know, a lot of things happen to us every day that we have no control over. But HIV and other sexually transmitted diseases aren't things that just happen to you. You do have a choice. You can choose to use a condom, have safe sex, and take control of your life. Asking for a condom isn't stupid. It's smart. It shows that you care about yourself and your partner. You can do something about sexually transmitted diseases. Use a condom. Every partner. Every time. We, we do. do. A message brought to you by Wicked Pictures and AIDS Project Los Angeles. 
Hey, what's up? This is Darius from Hootie and the Blowfish for Rad, recording artists against drunk driving. When you go out and party and you get drunk, then drive, you're not only loaded, you're a loaded weapon. When you celebrate, designate. Choose a designated driver every night. Remember, music lives and so should you. Hi, this is Joe Elliott from Def Leppard for RAD, recording artists against drunk driving. Planning on going out and having a party? Great, have a lot of fun. But do me a big favor and don't blow it. Always choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives. You should too. Do you know whether it's a girl or a boy? You're pregnant and you're looking forward to that baby. You'd like to have a drink just to relax, but you don't want to do anything that might hurt your baby. Any other time, it would be just an innocent drink. But while you're pregnant, the best choice for you and your baby is to stop drinking and call your doctor for advice. While you're pregnant, don't drink, don't risk your baby's future. A public service message from the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Hey, everybody, Loveline, I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Lincoln Park in here tomorrow night. It'll be good to see them. Don't think we've seen them in a little bit. No. We'll uh, look forward we, to that we tomorrow night. We kind of predicted they'd be around, remember? When we were dealing with uh, At the Drive-In and Lincoln Park, and we thought, hmm. Yeah, I remember uh, that both bands came out about the same time, yep. At the Drive-In and Lincoln Park. Yep. And uh, At the Drive-In, turns out the guys were a-holes. I remember that clearly, and then... We went and saw him uh, perform with Lincoln Park, and we thought, no, nope, at the drive-in sucks. And then I thought, good, that's nice. Because Lincoln Park are great It's always guys. nice when a-holes suck. And then uh, Lincoln Park, we thought, well, these guys are good. And uh, sure enough, well, here they are. Maybe there is a god. Kurt? Yeah. You're 26? Yes. What's up? Um, I have a, a question. Today at work, me and a guy had a bet. He was trying to tell me that if you have anal sex with a girl... Um, she produces secretions, lubricating secretions out of her anal. Yep. And I disagreed. It's called number two. <laughs> yes, that's that's what lubricating is the number two. Were Drew, that? anything, uh, any secretions down there? No, nothing different than a man's. Well, yeah, what what, what about uh, what about a little natural uh, WD-40 just to help uh, things out of the chute? <laughs> I mean, Seems should you? I'm saying if I was designing a body. No, anuses produce a little mucus. A little mucus. Too, but males produce it too. You know what I mean? It's just a little bit of. Oh, no different. Oh, no so, so, Kurt, were you saying a difference between women and men? No, I was saying he was saying that a girl produces, um, if she has an orgasm, she can have an orgasm out her anal. She can That's have an called a fart. Yeah. That's what I... I no, she yeah. can have an orgasm from anal sex, but it's only guys like Jennifer who are just... Women like Jennifer who we are just talking to who already have multiple orgasms that tend to be the ones that do that. But there's no anal orgasm. There's no anal orgasm per se. There's no anal clitoris. There's no anal G-spot. There's no anal vaginal secretions. No, right. That's your anus. But there, yeah. but, but there is a little mucus that's produced to help things. Sometimes, yeah, for some people. Actually, God meant that mucus for things that were uh, sliding out of the anus, Absolutely. actually. Absolutely. So you can only really appreciate it on the back stroke, yes. those uh, you religious folks out That's there. Right. All right. David? Yep. Not the compression stroke, as we like to say Hello? in the business. Yeah, you're 25. 25, yes. What's up? My, my question is, I've been seeing this girl for about six months now, and she's really awesome and everything, and she's been asking me a lot of questions about my past. And the, the truth be told, my past is, I was with a man for eight years, Ooh. and... Oh. Yeah, um, just a phase I went through, I guess. I don't know how to explain uh, it, that, but I'm afraid to tell hold her. On, uh, because, phase, I mean, uh, hold, hold on. on. Phase is uh, giving a guy a handy at a club when you're really high on X a uh, right. couple weekends right. in a row. Living with a dude for eight years, uh, that's a way of life. That's a commitment. Yeah, it's not a phase. Well, do you think it's possible to change that about, about, um, about a person? I think that sometimes that happens, but usually in the course of some kind of 
like a catastrophic event or intensive analysis or something, people will change sometimes. Right. But rarely, almost never. Well, I, I mean, obviously you're trying to uh, live it down. Or change right. it, change it. Or change it. And I guess the question is, is do you feel like you're with a woman now because you don't accept the gay lifestyle? Or, or you're trying not to be gay. Uh, I That's, think that I could spend the rest of my life with this girl. Um, but okay. in, in doing that, I think this can be important that she knows, you know, mm. because I mean, my family knows, everybody knows. And how is it you're not gay? Attracted. How is, how is it? How I just, it? I'm not attracted to men. How did you get over that? I, uh, I, I don't think I ever was. I'm not really sure how to explain it other than were you, was, were you sexually right when I met this guy, I was just really attracted to him and, uh, it just went from there and I got stuck in it and just stayed with it cause you get comfortable. How old were you when you got stuck in uh, it? 17. Were you sexually that. abused when you were like 11 or something? No, nothing. How old was he? Uh, 18 at the time. And we were together for eight years and then I've been alone for Were you having months. thoughts about women when you were 17? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Abs yeah. I was dating a girl when we met. And yet some guy sucked you into a relationship just, to you? Exactly. I think I just, my problem was I think I could just got stuck. Was and, he, now I have to, and now I have to explain. <laughs> was there anything else weird about it? Any kind of, any kind of uh, cultural or, you know, were you any kind of cult or anything or something like no, that? No, nothing, nothing at all. Nothing like that. It was just, if this guy was a woman, we'd probably been still together. And women have but. this. Men don't usually have this. Hold on a second. <laughs> yeah, they're not, they're not normally uh, this flexible. Yeah. Uh, he was with a girl at 17. Yeah. He was into chicks. Everything was fine. He met a guy. Just kind of got sucked into it for eight years. And by the way, eight years the marriage. from from uh, 17 to 25 is your entire adult sexual life. He's only 25 uh, now. It just ended. That, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Uh, How did it end? Let's figure that out. How did that relationship end? Found someone else. A girl? He, yeah, he, no, he did. He found another guy. So this would still be going on? Um, I'm not sure. Well, I'm it sounds really like sure. it would well, be. Why did it end then? What's that? Because I chose to leave. The lifestyle was just too different. It wasn't what I was expecting out of life, I guess. I don't know. But my thing is, is that... I, All right, I, you're, I, you're in... Okay, so you're in love with this girl now. Right. And you have no intention of ever being with another man. No. How long have you been with her? For six months. Six months. Okay. I, uh, I say keep this to yourself. Right. Oh. Does she know anything? Right. Nothing. The okay, problem is that she's starting to meet my family and my parents and stuff like that, and I'm just afraid that okay. you know, something's going to be said and something's going to come up, and I don't know how to approach it if I should do it ahead of time so it doesn't come down to it. Oh, yeah, it's going to have a couple, should, of, couple of you know, beers. Because, I mean, if, yeah, yeah. If we, I mean, if we hey, get queer serious, bait, come here. You coming over for Christmas? <laughs> well, I, I don't know how to advise him because I don't, uh, under I know how to I don't understand him. the situation. Okay, David, here's the deal. She will freak out hard and heavy. Right if and when she hears about this. Believe right. you me, as cool as it is for a guy when the chick tells him, <laughs> yeah, I had a little right. something with my friend in summer camp, yeah. is as freaky as it is for a woman. Women freak out when they hear this. And if yeah. they don't, you may not want her. <laughs> so here's the thing. If you're in love with her and you're not planning on straying and you've gotten guys out of your system, you have a little talk with your family, you tell them, uh, please uh, shut your pie holes. Right. And I will tell her on my terms, and I'm in a good time, and you never tell her. And I don't know that this can't happen, but I've never seen. I, I worry David that happen. I wear I worry about you uh, keeping this uh, this straight facade up. Somewhere David. he's going to get a honking for mail. As we all do. Mm -hmm. As we yeah. all do. <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay, lie, lie, right. lie. Right. Thank oh, you. Oh boy. Ugh. Uh, producer Ann is uh, not listening to the show, but she can hear me. You just not. And how freaked out would you be if you found a guy, you thought you were in love, things were getting serious, you'd been been with him for six months, and then found out he'd just basically been exclusively with a dude for the eight prior years. I you, mean, you'd be over. That'd be a complete Tara deal breaker. Just vomited. Complete deal breaker. <sighs> right? Right. Yeah. You want this thing to work out? You do not. Don't say you've been with a guy one time. It mm -hmm. freaks girls out, and uh, rightfully so. <laughs> we'll be back. Okay, so I know there's nothing wrong with me. So what's up? So I was like you, and I used to think that these datelines were totally cheesy. Why can't I meet anybody? But I tried everything else and thought, what the hell? So I called the dateline and actually met a cool guy. I called the dateline and I hooked up with some cool people. Believe it or not, other normal people are out there looking too. 877-889-DATE. <laughs> 
one eight hundred love one nine one. Okay, people, come on, settle down, settle down. Everyone, settle down. Joanne DiCarlo. Present. William Robertson. Here. Raymond Vega. Yeah, I'm here. Peter Lawrence. John Earhart. Marona Maxwell. Andrea Thompson. Andrea Thompson. Every day, 10 children are killed by gunfire. 10 dead kids. 10 kids too many. The violence won't stop until you help stop it. To find out how, call 1-800-WE-PREVENT for free information. That's 1-800-WE-PREVENT. And please call today. Not one more lost life. Not one more grieving family. Not one more. A public service message from this station, the U.S. Department of Justice, the Crime Prevention Coalition, and the Ad Council. Hello, my name is Rome, and I'm here for RAD. Music is very important to me, but what's most important is life. Please, please choose a designated driver. Don't drink and drive. You put the spell on me. I'm hooked, baby. Crazy love. What'll it be, lady? You think you might be pregnant. You need to see your doctor. You want to tell your family, and you need to stop drinking alcoholic beverages. The best choice for you and your baby is to stop drinking and call your doctor for advice. Congratulations. You were right. You're pregnant. If you have questions about drinking during your pregnancy, ask your doctor. Be good to your baby right from the start. A public service message from the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Hey, this is Kate Pearson from the B-52s. For Rad, getting drunk is your own business, but when you drive drunk, you make it everybody's business. Don't drink and drive. Be responsible, plan ahead, and choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives, and so should you. Baby, you want to go for a ride? Why, Vince, I didn't know you cared. I don't, but I'm looking for a baby. Uh, but, Vince, we're crash dummies. Well, your head's about the size of a baby. <laughs> what are you doing? Taking it off! Ah! I'm using your head in a rear-facing infant seat. Why? To show how babies up front are in airbag danger. You know I get sick when I ride backwards and without a body. Up in front, kids won't know what hit them when the airbag blows. Then why do people put their kids up front, Vince? I don't know. Maybe it makes them feel better to see them sitting by their side. Although, if my baby looks like you, he'd ride in the truck. <laughs> hey, where are we going, Vince? Yeah, you know that brick wall with the big bullseye? Uh, I can see it vaguely in the back of my mind. Well, in two seconds, that's exactly where it's going to be. <laughs> Holy cow, Larry, you're embedded in the seat. Tire iron. I can't understand you. I'll go get a tire iron. Thank you. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your kids in the back seat. A message from the Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. Hi, this is Dennis Franz of NYPD Blue for RAD, recording artists, actors, and athletes against drunk driving. My character, Andy Sipwitz, has learned that there are a lot of things in life you have no control over. Fortunately, driving drunk isn't one of them. If you drink, don't drive. Choose a designated driver, and if one of your friends has been drinking, get the keys. Friends don't let friends drive drunk. A message from the Department of Transportation, Ad Council, National Association of Broadcasters, and RAD. Did you hear what Smokey said? Did you hear what Smokey said? I want to know if you heard what Smokey said. Smokey said only you. This is Marty Stewart from my pal Smokey Bear reminding you if you must burn debris or trash, do it safely. Check local laws on burning and never burn on dry when you date. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Smokey didn't mention nobody else. Smokey said only you. This message from the USDA Forest Service and your state forester and advertising council. Listen up. This is the fact. One in two. 
That's how many new HIV infections occur among people under the age of 25 in this country. One half. To know more about how to protect yourself, call toll-free 1-866-344-KNOW. We now return you to your regularly scheduled life. I was actually driving in tonight, and I heard this song, and I almost turned around. It's like <laughs> you thought the shit game was the was, show was over. I was on the tan. I was just yanked the <laughs> e-brake, pulled the Starsky and Hutch move, slapped the siren on the roof of the car, and uh, head home. on home. That's I had right. a great Pavlovian response to it. All righty, well that's a show. I want to thank Stephen Jenkins for coming in here. Third Eye Blind uh, CD. It's been three years. It is out. It sounds uh, great from uh, what we've heard. Go out, get that, support him. They're going to be on uh, The Tonight Show on Leno tomorrow, uh, tomorrow right? night. Yep. You can go watch them there. And Lincoln, Lincoln Park, Park yeah. in here tomorrow night. So until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. I got down to <laughs> it, and uh, she got, like, uh, real big beef curtains. I didn't know if that... Whoa! <laughs> this has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Anne Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood Women.